This is your world, where you get ready for movie night, a gaming session, or some downtime. In your world, every little thing has to be just right. Because every little thing matters. Welcome to ultra-fast unlimited internet, flexible TV, and a powerful network to make it all happen your way. Welcome to a world of your very own. Well, good evening, everybody. Bob Aikens here along with Terry Doyle at the Peterborough Memorial Center. Tonight, all set. This game, the Plymouth Whalers and the Peterborough Peets on a snowy night. It is certainly a snowy night, and we'll have to see uh, how many people uh, take in tonight's game here at the Memorial Center. We welcome those of you watching us here on TV Kojiko throughout the province here as the Peterborough Peets and the Plymouth Whalers get set to go for OHL action. The Peets, first of three games this week, Tomorrow night in Kingston, could be weather permitting there, and then on Saturday night at home against the Brampton Battalion. Three weeks ago, it was the Whalers and the Peterborough Peets in suburban Detroit, Michigan at the CompuWare Sports Arena, and that game was decided very late. The Peterborough Peets in Plymouth, and there's Patrick Coletta scoring a goal to tie the hockey game at five in the third period. And that's where things were. It went right to overtime. The Peets putting pressure on goaltender Ryan Nye of the Whalers in the extra frame, but not able to solve the Whalers goaltender, who was then traded to St. Mike's a couple weeks later. The game went to a shootout. Steve Downey scoring there upstairs on Nye. David Shawn's very solid in the shootout. And Daniel Ryder decided it as the Peterborough Peets picked up a 6-5 win three weeks ago and won the game at the CompuWare Sports Arena. So now the Whalers looking to get revenge here in Peterborough this evening. And there have been some changes to the Plymouth lineup. There's one new addition, Derek Merlini, coming over from the Erie Otters recently. And as for the rest of the lineups, Evan Brophy, a familiar name as a member of the Belleville Bulls, now a member of this Plymouth Whalers team. And Jod Vigilante on his left, along with Dan Collins, a very dangerous line for the Whalers this evening. As for the Peterborough Peets, the change you see right at the bottom left of your screen, Craig Sescon, the new defenseman coming over from the Mississauga Ice Dogs. Zach Harnden playing up front, uh, getting an opportunity with Jordan Stahl and Jamie Tardif. And quickly, we take a look at the trade that happened there. Lucas Lobsinger came over, went to the uh, Mississauga Ice Dogs, along with the flip of import picks, Craig Sescon coming over to the Peterborough Peets. And here... Well, it was obvious, I think, that we needed to add some uh, experience to our blue line. Uh, it was obvious that uh, with only six, if anybody got hurt, uh, especially from our top four guys, that we were going to be forced to play three young players. And uh, it's hard as a young defenseman. Uh, and uh, so this gives us some breathing room. Craig is uh, uh, not a high-profile guy, but I know he's really happy to be here. And, and I think he's in a situation here that we're hoping that can really help him excel. Craig's a defensive defenseman. and. Uh, he has some toughness to his game. We want to make sure that he controls uh, his emotions, that uh, he's not taking unnecessary penalties, but there's an element of toughness to him. And uh, as I said, a defensive defenseman that uh, we're hopeful can play one-on-ones well and uh, be a steadying influence to uh, the core that we already have here. We know in the second half when the games get tougher that uh, we added toughness, we added experience, and. Uh, we added uh, a guy that's really excited to be here. So we're looking forward to having Craig with us and uh, feel uh, fortunate we were able to do, do the deal. And uh, the rest of it will come into fruition when we see what we can either use the, the European pick for or uh, trade it for. It's in our mind anyways, it's a valuable asset to have and uh, hopefully we can make good use of that as well.
you have the national anthem. We're just about set to go for OHL action tonight between the Whalers and the Peterborough Peets. Bob Akins with a look at the starting goaltenders. And there you see them on your screen right now. On the left is the starting goaltender for the Plymouth Whalers tonight. One of the new players for the Whalers. Number one, Justin Peters, the starting goaltender. And on the right of your screen, the starting goaltender tonight for the Peterborough Peets. Number one as well, David Schatz. Justin Peters has been solid for the Whalers since being acquired from the Toronto St. Michael's Majors last week in a deal that saw Steve Spade go to the Majors as well through Belleville and goaltender Ryan Nye go to the Majors. There's a new scoreboard here at the Memorial Center. We're pretty dark on the video screens. Not set to go with that as of yet. They're hoping to have that set to go for Saturday's game. The referee is Joe Park, the linesman Jonathan Rose and John Campbell. All set to go here, and the Peterborough Peets bring the puck down into the Whalers' zone, get a shot away, and right off the beginning of the game, Justin Peters makes a save. Daniel Ryder moving in to take that shot, but Peters seeing a quick action right off the bat. Peters very familiar with the Memorial Center as a member of the Majors, also played in the Canada-Russia Challenge on November 28th, 14 OHL. Ryder gets that face off to the far boards, is knocked in around behind the Whalers net. Over here on this side, they batted around to that corner down there, dug free by the Whalers' Brophy. He sends it to the corner on the other side. In there is Ward, takes a slap at it, slaps it back in behind the net, picked up there, and cleared out by Shepley, but just to the blue line, but not out. Now Reddix, he gets the pass over. There's a shot taken by Ryder. That's knocked away by Peters. The Whalers trying to get that puck out over their own blue line. They finally do through center, and the Peets just send it back in again. Now there's Shepley. He sends it down the ice near the Peterborough net taken by the defense. Over here on this side, Hendricks. Trevor Hendricks feeds it ahead, but it goes all the way down the ice, and this will be an icing call against the Peterborough Peets. Defenseman Ryan McGinnis of the Plymouth Whalers, one of the players that Mike Vellucci, the head coach, general manager, he's also team president of the Whalers, calls upon to log a lot of ice time on the blue line for the Whalers, and so far this season with 15 points and a plus eight rating. Puck's going to be dropped down here just to the right of the Peterborough goaltender. Ends up sliding to the boards in the corner. Kyle Raftix goes after it, sends it around to the other side. Moving up quickly was uh, Fournier. Sends it back in behind the Peterborough net again. Along the boards here on this side. Knocked out through center stop there. Once again by Fournier, he wraps it back and across the Peterborough line. Now out through center, Fournier. Knocked it ahead again. That's Fournier just inside the line. Falls. Puck gets away from him. And now we get a stoppage in play. And it looks like there was a reason that Fournier fell out there. And it's a hook and call going to the Peterborough Peets to start out this game. Just a minute 19 in. Joe Park singling out Jordan Stahl. And he goes off for hooking. Interesting conversations talking about Jordan Stahl in the press room tonight. Some of the scouts questioning why Stahl is not at the Team Canada selection camp saying that Stahl, uh, in their eyes, definitely should be there. Here's the face-off just at the Peterborough line. It's knocked back into the corner. After there, Aaron Dawson from the Peterborough defense. It gets to the blue line, but not out. Kept in. They're swatting it around. Slides across the goal mouth to the near side. Back out to the blue line, but unable to hold it in there was McGinnis, and the puck was all the way down the ice. Into the corner for the Whalers to pick it up as uh, Vidizia. It uh, ends up in the corner on the uh, far side now, brought back in behind the Plymouth net through center. Here's the pass. And across the line, touch there, but we get a whistle as they came in across that blue line offside. John Armstrong, a veteran forward of the Whalers Club here as Plymouth working on the power play second in the Ontario Hockey League right now on the man advantage. You saw the numbers there before the last faceoff while the Pete's right in the middle of the pack on the penalty kill. Right from the draw, the puck clears down the ice. Ends up going back and behind the net. Well, they start out pass. Rolfi to the other side and across that blue line, getting a shot away there was Neal. That's knocked down. There's an injured. Well, he's just slow to get up back and behind the net. Having problems getting up his Neal, as a matter of fact. Play out in center ice territory. Whalers have possession of the Puck there, Brophy, and finally it comes in across the line and touched by Peterborough, and we have the whistle sounding, but Neil uh, crashed into the boards pretty hard down there. He did, and Mike Vellucci having a word with uh, referee Joe Park 
trying to uh, convince him that there was a penalty to be called on that play, but none forthcoming with 52 seconds to go on the minor to Jordan Stahl. Two and a half minutes gone in the opening period. And there is Volucci, a former member of the Belleville Bulls in the Ontario Hockey League, played in the Copyware program, who are the uh, owners of the Plymouth Whalers. From the faceoff, the puck cleared down into the corner, takes a hop out near the Whalers net. Broken up here now, pass over on this side to Brophy, tips off his stick and down into the corner they go, chasing after it there was uh, uh, Paisolini. Back near the blue line, Collins keeps it in, here's Collins with it again, sends it over near the corner on the other side, turning for the Whalers, Brophy back to the blue line, shot in wide of the net, and the Peets will break that up and shoot it all the way down the ice. Back here comes Ward to get it deep in his own zone, back in behind the net. Starting out, gets out of his own zone across center now, moves in across that Peterborough line, still going, puts it right in front of the net. Nobody was there, and it ends up along the boards on this side. Brophy again has it. Brophy, number 11 for the Whalers. In the corner as the penalty for the Peterborough Peets has expired. Here's a shot, bounces off the goaltender. Out in front, there's another and scores! Shot taken from out near the blue line by Marlini, but it deflected in from the far side of the net. And we'll see who the final man to touch it is here. It is Merlini's goal right from the point. There you see the first opportunity for the Whalers. The puck went airborne and came back to the point. Merlini just getting it right back on goal. And went over the shoulder of right. David Shots. And I think it's Merlini's goal all the way. His second goal of the season. As mentioned, he was acquired about a week and a half ago from the Erie Otters, an overage defenseman. First look there when it happened, it almost looked to me like it changed directions. But when you see it again, it doesn't look like it did. And the... Plymouth Whalers take a 1-0 lead in this hockey game over the Peterborough Peets. Puck down into the Peterborough end. Down there to dig it loose, Gainer. Gainer for the Whalers. Losing it to the Peets now, coming down the ice and across the line goes Peterborough. That was McDonough, he was stopped and Gainer brings it back again. Gainer shooting it back and behind the Peterborough net. Raft is in that corner, battling for it, beats it along the boards there. That was uh, sent ahead to Soriel. He was bumped, and the Whalers able to shoot it back deep into the Peterborough end once more. Behind the net, the Whalers. They'll try to center it, but uh, it's held against the side of the net by the Peterborough goaltender, David Schatz. He forces a faceoff there. Plymouth made the drive last night to Oshawa, especially with knowing that the uh, snow may have been on the way. So an easy trip, or at least as easy as it can be with all the snow up to 115. And uh, no bus legs, a factor here for the Whalers. And it showed taking the 1-0 lead. In that Peterborough corner, it's wrapped along the boards on this side through center. Here come the Peets, Caruana. And across the line, he's knocked down. The puck comes loose. The Whalers pick it up, but as they do, the whistle sounds and the referee has his arm in the air and he's indicating there's going to be an elbowing penalty here. That's exactly it, Joe Park with the uh, the signal of an elbowing penalty and it's going to be the Plymouth Whalers getting the gate and it will be Jared Bowl going off for elbowing. Now just too short of the 100 penalty minute mark for Bowl on the season and the Peets go on the power play. Right now six in the OHL in that department. The Whalers third on the penalty kill. A drop there down in Whaler territory. It's in the corner stall. Has it, sends it behind the net. Now comes out here to the blue line to Hendricks. Hendricks is shot. They try to tip it in front of the net. One of the Peets hit pretty hard right there and knocked down. That was Tardiff as the Whalers shoot it down the ice. Peterborough back here to get it. Pass ahead to Morrison. Morrison tipped off his stick when sliding all the way down the ice. And I thought it tipped off a stick, but they're bringing it back, and the face-off will be all the way back down into the uh, Peterborough end. Pete's maybe arguing that just a wee bit. But it will indeed be to the right of goaltender David Schantz, knocked down in the Whalers' zone. Cardiff takes the face-off here, along with Vigilante. Peterborough has that puck, moving out of their own zone. Here's up along the boards on this side, Morrison. Morrison gets in across the line. He's stopped there. And the Whalers send it back down inside the Peterborough line. Hendricks, Brink wides it. Now it comes back to Hendricks again. Hendricks making his way to center, gives it up to Tardiff. Here's Tardiff trying to cut in from the far side. He's forced back and behind the net. 
Sends the puck around on this side. Hendricks moves up, trying to hold it in at the blue line. Can't do it. It's cleared out through center, and Reddicks has it. Liam Reddicks cuts it across that blue line. He'll go to the far side. Gets a shot away right on. And the save made there by Peters. And from the rebound, the Whalers clear the puck down the ice. Pete's back to get it behind the net. Raftus. Raftus from the corner gives it to Ryder. Ryder up to on this side to Stewart. Stewart feeds it ahead to Coletta. Back and behind the net, the Peets. Back to the blue line. Here's Raftus with it. Raftus at the blue line decides to hand it off to Ryder on the far side. Ryder winds up, gets a shot away. It's right there at the side of the goal. Not down. Coletta picks it up, fires it into the corner. Peets have it again. Trying to move it around. There's Raftus. It changes directions after going off a skate. Maybe didn't get as much on it in the first place as he'd like to have. Eight seconds remaining in the Plymouth penalty as the Peets whap that puck around behind the net on this side. And Bull comes out of the box. Teams are at full strength as we get a couple of players pushing each other over there on the far side. Merlini. And Coletta. And Coletta. Yep. And uh, Merlini dropped his gloves and stick, and Coletta skating away there. And Merlini's going to go off for unsportsmanlike conduct. And the Peets will go right back on the power play. Some bad judgment there by Derek Merlini as he got tied up with Coletta down low and uh, decided to drop the gloves. And if you're going to drop the gloves, make sure the other player is going to do the same. Yep. If not, chances <laughs> are you'll be in the penalty box. And that's exactly where Merlini is. So the Peets go on their second power play of the game. And that'll start as soon as they get the equipment of Mr. Merlini cleaned up. There's Mike Letizia taking at least uh, part of the paraphernalia of Merlini over the penalty box. 13-22 left to play here in the first period. 1-0 for Plymouth. This first period being brought to you by Andon Bath Center and Mr. Lube. Base off will be down in the Plymouth zone to the right of the net. Pete's on the power play for the next two minutes now. Buck has dropped, slides near the net, cleared around behind the goal by the goaltender. And the Whalers pick it up and clear it out through center and down and across the Peterborough line. Now on this side, here comes Morrison. Morrison shoots it down into the corner. They move up. Part of trying to get a hold of it. And two Peterborough defensemen trying to reach that puck. It was just between them there. And they were forced out through center. Here come the Plymouth Whalers again. This time broken up there by the Peets as they starting back Hendricks. Trevor Hendricks gets in across the Whalers line. Stuffs it off into the corner for Tarta. They feed it, tried to get it back here to Hendricks at the blue line, failed to do that. In the corner, now they'll get it to Hendricks. Here's Hendricks, rink winds it. Over there on the other side, there's a shot by Liam Reddicks. That was off a stick, and bounds out through center, and Hendricks back to get it again. Over to Reddicks, back to Hendricks. Hendricks feeds it ahead to Stahl. Stahl trying to weave his way across the line. Another penalty coming up to the Plymouth Whalers, as now knocked down in the corner is Morrison, and here's the whistle sounding. And it was Jordan Stahl who came in over the blue line and was hooked up on the play. And the Whalers are going to pick up actually a slashing penalty is what's going to be called by Joe Park. And it's going to be the captain of the Plymouth Whalers, Gino Paisolini, going off with still 55 seconds remaining on the original penalty. Now the faceoff is going to come out at center ice because the linesman Jonathan Rose, judge at the Peets, had the extra attacker leave the bench too early for David Schantz coming to the bench. And that's why the play was actually whistled down a little bit early and the Peets lose some real estate with the faceoff at center ice. And uh, from that faceoff, the puck is knocked all the way back to Schantz. Schantz now feeds it up, dumped in across the Plymouth line, broken up there by the defense and that's cleared into the Peterborough bench, have a few people ducking down there, and of course the whistle. Smart play though by Mike Letizia, seeing the uh, Pete's bench, and you can shoot it in there anytime, and won't get the delay a game penalty. Letizia, a veteran with this Whalers team. Right now, minus two on the year, would like to bring that up to the even mark. William Reddick stuffs it down into the corner there, back to Reddick again. Reddick feeds it over there to Hendricks. Hendricks drops it back. Back to Hendricks again. There's Hendricks in front of the net. Gets a shot. Missed on the near side. Into the corner. They push and shove down there, trying to dig that puck free. And it is dug free by Patrick Collada. Collada went to move in front of that. Puts it out in front. There's a shot. That goes wide and winds up back in this corner again. Now turning. Liam Reddicks. Reddicks 
Puts it wide of the net, hoping it would be deflected, but it wasn't. Back out here to Hendricks again. Winds up, hard drive, knocked down in front of the goal. Now, one of the Whalers out back on the ice again. Merlini back out, and the Whalers just one man short as the puck is cleared through center ice. Pete's gobbled it up back there. Hendricks feeds it ahead, trying to feed it through to Coletta. And there was a collision there between Coletta and Shepley. Shepley went flying on that, but the puck ends up back down and behind the Peterborough net. Now, Pete's move up. Here's a pass to Morrison. Morrison dumps it down into the Whalers' corner. On this side, they're trying to dig it free. 31 seconds remaining in the Peterborough power play. There's a shot right on. Peters the save. Rebound in front. Another shot. Never got through. And the puck comes to the boards on this side. They'll dig along there, and it's picked up by the Peterborough Peets. Jamie Tardiff, and it looks like there's going to be a penalty this time to Peterborough coming up. And exactly it. It's going to be a hooking call coming here, and getting the gate will be Jordan Stahl for the Peets. So the Whalers will eventually go on the power play. Still 21 seconds to go on the Paisolini penalty, but then it will be 139 on the power play for the Plymouth Whalers. Right now 0 for 1 on the man advantage. Face off outside the Plymouth line comes back to Dawson. His hard drive right on. Peters the save. Leaves it there. Whalers now. Start back. Shepley. His pass out to Brophy at center. Brophy hit across the line with Neil, but Neil moved in just a little bit too quickly. Actually, I guess it was uh, I guess it was Neil moving in too quickly on the far side and nullifying that rush. Evan Brophy just won too many moves at the line, trying to break in on Aaron Dawson, but uh, Brophy cutting across, and that put the Whitby native James Neal offside. Neal, the reigning OHL Player of the Week, will be my guest in the first intermission from here at the Memorial Center. There's the puck being dropped outside the Peterborough line, poked ahead by Stewart, and a backhand shot gets it on goal. Puck was in the air, and they failed to pick up the rebound as the Plymouth Whalers now taking it back in behind the net. Tija sends it out through center, finds its way onto the stick of Neal again. Over on the other side, it's cleared up and out of play, and the faceoff will be just outside the Peterborough blue line. There is the aforementioned Evan Brophy. We've seen him many times here in Peterborough as a member of the Belleville Bulls, but uh, was moved to Plymouth along with Wes Cunningham, who's injured tonight. Going the other way, Corey Tanaka, a uh, young, speedy forward, almost maybe a young Patrick Coletta type forward, and a pair of draft picks going to the Bulls in that deal. They're down into the Peterborough end. Over in the far corner, taking a whack out of there was Brian Young. They failed to clear it at the blue line. Turning there, Vigilante comes right in front, knocked away from in front of the net and cleared all the way down the ice by the Peets. One minute remaining in the Plymouth power play. Whalers now starting back from deep inside their own zone. Vigilante gets across the blue line, makes one move, but taken out off the play by Brian Young as he was approaching the net. In the corner, behind the goal, Brian Young. Young, it comes out in front of the goal. A swat taken out of there by Fournier, but he missed the net. And now gobbled up by the Peterborough Peets Tardiff. He sees an opening and just shoot it all the way down the ice. Justin Peters leaving it there as the defense gets back. Starting out, Shepley. Shepley dumps it up to center ice. Actually, that was Ward that dumped it up through center ice, but it's cleared right back in again by the Peets. They'll try again. Moving out of their own zone, McGinnis. McGinnis shoots it through center. A pass over there on the other side. As two players bump together and ends up going back and behind the net. One of the Peterborough Peets players, that's uh, Tarda, falls on the puck. And uh, with that, of course, the uh, whistle sounds. Jamie Tardiff still one short of the 20 goal mark for this season. 19 on the year, go along with 31 points on the season. A plus six rating for Tardiff as well here in his overage season. Now there is Brophy taking the face off against Peterborough's Jordan Morrison. Morrison won the face off and it's blasted down the ice. Now the Peterborough penalty expires and stalls out of the box. He heads to the bench and Naslin comes out. Over there, back in the corner on the other side, it's swatted back in behind the Plymouth net. It's loose pass along the far boards to Brophy. Here's Brophy. He feeds it up here along the boards to Bowl. James Bowl in the corner for Plymouth. Dug free by the 
Peterborough Peets and sent through center. That's Caruana after it for Peterborough. Getting to it first though is Sheffley. It's cleared back near the Peterborough line, then gobbled up by the Peets again. Trying to catch up with his Justin Soriel. His drive taken there by teammate Naslin. On goal, knocked away, and the Plymouth Whalers send it back out through center again. Pete's have it, and across the line, here's Morrison. Morrison, he's shoved off the puck, moving in to help. Notice Patrick Coletta. Coletta bumped along the board, still comes up with the puck, though. Feeds it out in front, it's bouncing in front of the goal. It's among some legs there. There's a backhand shot taken there by Morrison, and finally come up with it is uh, Justin Peters, but he had to make a couple of good saves in there, Terry. Peters still wearing his Toronto St. Michael's Majors mask, and he had requested a trade from the Majors. Uh, he and Bud Stefanski just not really seeing eye to eye, and Peters game maybe got a little stale with the Majors as well, and now looking to be re-energized here with the Plymouth Whalers, an OHL All-Star for the last couple years, a draft pick of the Carolina Hurricanes, and they are also owned uh, by the Whalers, or CompuWare owns both teams, so uh, Peters becoming a part of the Carolina organization maybe a little bit earlier. Back and behind the net, they go. That's Letizia there, the Whalers, he, they can't clear it. Pete's have it in front of the goal, but never do get a shot away as it's knocked away by Fournier. And now down the ice come the Whalers. That's Neal trying to cut in on the far side, stopped at the Peterborough blue line, rifles it down into the corner. Pete's back to pick it up deep in their own end. Shot along the boards on this side. Now Stahl gets it. Here's Stahl trying to get a shot. His shot actually went off the stick of McGinnis and bounded off into the corner on the near side. one nothing for the Plymouth Whalers over the Peterborough Peets here in this first period as the Whalers from behind their own net try to pass it out on the far side by Salini. Had to take it away from him as the Peets knocked it right back down into the Whalers zone again. Now it's cleared down the ice and we get a stoppage in play and the face off back inside the Whalers line. I believe that went across three lines there on that pass. Exactly. Neil just offside there. His younger brother Michael is a member of the Belleville Bulls playing as a uh, high draft choice of the Bulls in his quote unquote underage season. James Neal waited an extra year, played with the Bowenville Tier 2 Eagles before becoming a member of the Whalers. It's taken here by Raftus. Outside the blue line, rifle down into the corner. The Whalers behind the net. Passed along the boards here on this side. Vigilante, he tried to flip it out through center, did, but it was gobbled up there by Liam Reddix. And he shoots it back in behind the Whalers' net. Plymouth clearing it off the boards, off the glass, all the way down the ice. Nobody could touch it. And so the puck will be brought all the way back down again. Shots on goal 10 2 in favor of Peterborough, getting lots of pressure on Justin Peters, but right now not able to solve the veteran goaltender. We have not seen Craig Sescon, the newest Pete, on the ice as of yet because of the uh, power play. Sescon will be playing on the Pete's third defensive unit along with uh, newcomer, or at least newcomer this season, Mark Koloski. Puck is dropped there to the left of the Plymouth net, but immediately the whistle sounds. There they are dropping it again. Ends up going down into the uh, corner here on this side. Steve Ward there digging for it for the Whalers. It's knocked out through center. Cleared in by Brophy. Back and behind the Peterborough net. Dawson goes after it there. Dawson took a whack at it. Manages to have enough momentum to get out through center ice. Pete's failed to keep possession of the puck though. And is cleared by Vigilante back in wide of the Peterborough net. In around the boards on this corner. Stewart gets it for Peterborough. Was off a leg, bounces to the boards. Ryder tried to get it, but he overskated it then, and Vigilante picks it up. Vigilante hands it off and then gets it back again. And across the blue line, the Peets break that up, and now Stewart has it on this side. Greg Stewart knocks it in across the blue line, then he's stopped, comes out through center again. Now Sescon is out there for the Peterborough Peets. Latest member of the uh, Pete's organization kept in at the blue line. Some good digging there by the Peets in front of the net was Morrison. But finally the Whaler is able to clear it out and down the ice back in behind the Peterborough net. Beats back here retrieving it, bounces off the boards, gets by McGinnis, sliding all the way down the ice. Here's a race for it. Carol Watt going after it. Takes his man, McGinnis, in along the boards there. They dig for it, it squirts loose, ends up going back in behind the net. Out there is Merlini for the Whalers as the puck comes out through center and I believe hits somebody on the 
bench over there on that far side. There is Sescon, a former member of the Plymouth Wheelers. That's how he started his Ontario Hockey League career, was traded last year at the deadline to the Mississauga Ice Dogs for a second round draft pick. And right now leading the OHL with 128 minutes in the penalty box. Here's the puck now inside the Plymouth line. Whalers now, Merlini is out there. They try to flip it in the air. It's knocked down, goes to the uh, boards on the far side and across the Peterborough line, but picked up there by Morrison, who feeds it over here and cleared in by the Pete Spilowski. In that corner, deep in the Whalers' end now, comes around the boards on this side. A couple of players crash in the corner there. Right before your eyes as now the Pete's bring it around behind and in front of an open net. There's a shot and Peter's got his arm up in the air and stopped that. But it looks like we have a cross-checking penalty coming up to the Plymouth Whalers. But the Pete's came close on that and uh, a flopping Peters managed to knock the puck away. Well, Justin Peters doesn't lack any size and when you're down and out like that, you make yourself as big as possible and that's exactly what Peters did. And there was a delayed penalty coming up just before that, a cross-checking call in front of the net. But Peters down on his side, got the gloves, the blocker, anything else he could find in that net, try to get in the way of the shot. And Justin Caruana was at a bad angle and ended up getting it into Peters and the Pete's not able to score, will now go to work on their fourth power play. Liam Reddix feeds it across the ice to Hendricks. Hendricks dumps it ahead. Now Daniel Ryder back to Hendricks again. There's a shot that deflects wide of the Whalers net. In the corner here, Coletta was bumped. Puck still moving, it's loose. Whalers have it. Here come the Whalers trying to move out of their own zone. With it is uh, Pasolini. Pasolini's shot. That goes wide of the net. And now back through center again as Daniel Ryder gets it. Here's Ryder dropping it now to Hendricks. Hendricks tried to feed it to the side of the net, but it didn't make it through really to Patrick Collette. And now it comes across in front of the goal mouth, but nobody was there. Liam Reddix back to the blue line. Here's Hendricks again to Reddix. Reddix winds up, gets a shot. That goes off the leg of Pasolini and back in behind the Whalers net. Out to Hendricks again. Pete's trying to move it around, trying to get a good shot away, comes in front again, knocked away by the defense. That time it was Merlini, out in front, it's bouncing around right there at the side of the net. Goes to the boards, the Pete's have it. Coletta hands it back, there's Hendricks with a drive, that shot ends up in the corner on this side. Over here they dig away, trying to get it loose is Paisolini. Paisolini comes in front, there's a shot! Oh my goodness, and that puck was on its way into the net. And somehow Justin Peters moved the glove fast enough to snag it. Great save by Peters getting right there, getting that glove right up. You'll see it as a shot by Stewart. And Peters stretching across, making a nice glove save. An appreciative hand from the folks at the Memorial Center. One on the energy and uh, opportunity by the Peets, but then it's a nice save by Peters. The Peets remain on the power play for 33 seconds, but if you can't score on that opportunity, it's going to be <laughs> difficult to score all night. Well, arms were already heading into the air in celebration when they, when they realized the puck was actually in Peters' glove. It remains 1-0 for the Plymouth Whalers. Peets now at center ice. Rafts. He drives it down in behind the net. There's Stahl after it. Stahl hands it off. Gets it back again. Stahl gives it to Tardif. That's Tardif in the corner. Gives it to Stahl behind the net. Stahl lets it go to Morrison. Morrison now. The penalty is about to expire. Now Armstrong out of the box. And the Whalers are back to full strength. Puck taken there by the Whalers. They slip it all the way down the ice. But being back to full strength, that'll be an icing call. Peterborough in Kingston tomorrow night. We'll have that game for you right here on TV Kojiko. And then Saturday night, the Brampton Battalion and Wojtek Wolski make a visit to the Memorial Center. And, of course, we'll have that game for you here on TV Kojiko. 7.30 tomorrow night from Kingston, 7 o'clock Saturday. Here's the puck going to be dropped to the right of the net. That is the Plymouth net. And along the boards there on that side, one nothing for the Whalers here in the dying stages of the first period. Brought to you by Andam Bath Center and Mr. Lube as the puck down in that corner. Pete's moving it around. Ryder back to the point. There's a shot knocked down in front of the goal, but cleared away by the defense. And then out through center. Taken there by Rofi. Can't find any skating room. Ryder puts it in front of the net. 
Reddix was skating in front of the goal but just couldn't get a handle on the puck. Out just over the blue line and knocked back in again by the Peach defense and that's an icing call here. Or I should say an offside call against Peterborough. Brian Young still trying to pick up his first goal of the season. Six assists right now and 67 penalty minutes leading the Peterborough Peets in that department, but a pretty solid plus 10 rating as well. Second on the third on the Peets in that department. Peets have that puck from the faceoff taken here by Aaron Dawson. He ends up shooting it back and behind the Whalers net. Now Tardif has it. Tardif. He was being watched. Stahl moves in trying to get it. It flips way up into the air and out of play. And we get a whistle with 110 left in the period. Jordan Stahl, the top rated player in the Ontario Hockey League for the 2006 National Hockey League entry draft. And a decent handful of scouts here tonight taking in this game between the Peets and the Whalers. And especially when you have a uh, far west team coming to Peterborough, you just see a few extra scouts so they can avoid making the trip into Michigan. Here we have the puck right there at the side. There's a penalty coming up to the Peterborough Pete Stahl. And he hooked down one of the uh, Whalers there beside his net. Now Fournier. Here's Fournier with a shot right on. It ends up into the far side and centered out in front. There's another drive by Marlini. Comes in front, scores! Whalers get their second goal. Andrew Fournier parked himself in front of the net. Whalers putting on some pressure. They had Peters out of the net for the extra attacker. And the puck came right out in the slot, and Andrew Fournier put it right back on goal. And he picks up his 11th goal of the season. Merlini with a shot from the left point. That was stopped by shots, and comes right back into the slot. And right there at the hash mark, and a little bit farther in, was Fournier taking the shot, giving the Plymouth Whalers a 2 to nothing lead. There was a delayed penalty coming to Jordan Stahl. Wiped that off the board, and instead the Whalers have a 2 nothing lead, and we're going to have a scrap. All right, and this is uh, Caruana. Out there for the Peterborough Peets, and it's uh, Jared Bowl. And they're going to go at it right there at the Peterborough Blue Line. Took the time to line each other up before they started. This coming with only 47 seconds remaining in the first period. And again, that's Carawana number 19 of the Peterborough Peets. And they're still going at it. Right there in center ice. Now they drop to the ice, both of them together, really. And really not too much damage done on that. I think it's pretty much going to have to be called a draw, Terry. Bowl is a Columbus draft pick from Crystal Lake, Illinois. A little bit of size advantage on Justin Caruana for that one. And you're right, uh, for the most part, a little bit of wrestling. The gloves came off, the helmets even came off before they started out. But uh, all in all, a little wrestling match going there, a few shots apiece. And, uh, They'll head to the dressing room and get the uh, first chance to rest up for the second period as they'll remain in the penalty box for about four and a half minutes into the second period. Well, although the Peets have outshot Plymouth 15 to five here in this first period, the Plymouth Whalers leading at two nothing. As a matter of fact, up until that last little flurry, uh, the Whalers only had two shots on goal until just a few seconds ago. And now here come the Whalers again. They'll take that puck and fire it down and behind the Peterborough net. Clear it up along the boards here on this side. Knocked right back in again. Whalers have to get on side. They do. It's cleared. Dumped out through center. Taken there by Patrick Coletta. Coletta sends it down the ice. The puck's back in behind the Whalers net. Jordan Morrison, he's knocked down in the corner. They still dig for the puck. Morrison is up on his skates again. They keep moving it around. The Whalers come up with it, and here's a pass. Brings it out through center ice. Taken now by Collins. Collins is bumped by Young. Young falls. The puck's right at the Peterborough blue line. Now it bounces out through center. Taken by Collins again. Feeds it across. There's a shot taken by Vigilante as the buzzer sounds, and the first period is over. The first period of tonight's hockey game brought to you by Andon Bath Center and by Mr. Lube here on the from the Peterborough Memorial Center on the OHL tonight. The Peterborough Peets and the Plymouth Whalers shots on goal in that first period. The Peterborough Peets out shooting the Plymouth Whalers 15 to 5 but on the scoreboard it's 2 to nothing in favor of the Whalers. Good crowd here at the Peterborough Memorial Center tonight, despite the fact of the uh, 
The snow outside hasn't uh, dampened the spirits or kept people away from the Peterborough Memorial Center tonight by the looks of things. Haven't heard any figures yet and won't for a while, but uh, just looking around, you can tell that there is a good crowd in attendance here tonight. Well, Terry Doyle has, his, has made his way down to ice surface, and he has taken up his position down there, and he has a guest standing by, James Neal, from the Plymouth Whalers. So let's go downstairs. We'll hand it over to Terry Doyle. Thanks, Bob and D. James Neal joining me here. James, how big is it uh, here on the road starting out an Eastern road swing going up 2 nothing? Yeah, no, this is a huge game for us. This is uh, this is a big road trip. Uh, Saginaw's right on our tails, so uh, we're battling with them all the time. So uh, every two points is uh, huge. You're used to making some extended trips coming from the far west of the league. How nice is it to be able to make the trip into Oshawa last night, stay the night, to just have the short trip into here this evening? Yeah, that's great. Like, I love coming into my hometown. It's, uh, it's my favorite road trip, so I get to see uh, friends and family and play in, uh, play in front of a uh, big crowd. I'm sure it's always nice being from Whitby. A lot of rivalry, I'm sure, with Peterborough growing up. Oh, for sure. I played against them uh, my whole life in OMHA finals and, uh, and playoffs. So uh, coming here is, uh, is just, a big, uh, just a big game, and it's uh, a lot of fun. You talked about Saginaw being right there tied coming into this game, and I'm sure that's put a lot of drive into the team, even at this point in time in the season, knowing with every win you can uh, or loss, it will affect things in the standings with Saginaw right there. Yeah, for sure. Going into the Christmas break right now, every two points is big, like I said. And uh, and Saginaw was uh, was uh, coming on hard right now, so uh, like I said, every two points is, uh, is big for us right now. A couple moves in the last couple weeks here. Uh, John Vigilante coming back after uh, what happened down in Milwaukee. We'll fill our viewers in on that in the next period. But Justin Peters coming over as well. Well, uh, it was a case where maybe he and Ryan Nye somewhat equals in terms of ability, but it was an overage issue, I'm sure, as well. But uh, must be pretty pleased the way uh, Peters has come in. Yeah, Justin's awesome. He's come in. Uh, he's bonded great with the guys, and uh, he's, uh, he's an outstanding goalie. And then with uh, Vidge coming back, it just adds uh, a lot of more, a lot more depth to our uh, to our team. Finally, before we let you go, you know Peterborough's going to come out hungry, going down two nothing. What do the Whalers need to do here for the next 40 minutes? No, we got to just keep pushing, get the puck in deep, and uh, keep banging. Peterborough's got some big D, so as uh, as long as we're working down low, I think we can uh, get the two points. James Neal, thanks for joining us. Thanks a lot, Terry. That's James Neal, the Plymouth Whalers. They lead the Peterborough Peets two nothing after 20 minutes. Back with more in a moment. This is the OHL tonight, presented by Ann and Bass Center on TV Kojiko. This is your world, where you get ready for movie night, a gaming session, or some downtime. In your world, every little thing has to be just right. Because every little thing matters. Welcome to ultra-fast unlimited internet, flexible TV, and a powerful network to make it all happen your way. Welcome to a world of your very own. Back live at the Peterborough Memorial Center, the Plymouth Whalers have come to down tonight on this snowy Thursday evening and have taken a 2-0 lead over the Peterborough Peets. This is the OHL Tonight on TV. Coach I'm Terry Doyle. Thanks for joining us. Right now, it's our trivia question brought to you by Mr. Lube. Your chance to win tickets to an upcoming Peterborough Peets home game. And tonight, we want you to tell us what OHL team originally drafted the new Peterborough Peets defenseman, Craig Sascon. What OHL team originally drafted Craig Sascon? Email your answer in Hockey at coachico.ca. Peets Hockey is all one word at coachico.ca. Please include your name and telephone number and we'll select a correct entry. For, um, or a winner from the correct entries received is what I'm trying to say at this point in time. And of course we want to know what OHL team originally drafted new Peterborough Peets defenseman Craig Sescon. It is the Plymouth Whalers leading the Peterborough Peets by a score of 2 to nothing after 20 minutes of play. We're back with more coming up on the other side of this break. This is the OHL Tonight presented by Andon Bass Center on TV Coachico. This is your world, where you get ready for movie night, a gaming session, or some downtime. In your world, every little thing has to be just right. Because every little thing matters. Welcome to ultra-fast unlimited internet, flexible TV, and a powerful network to make it all happen your way. Welcome to a world of your very own.
and you can't avoid not playing as a man tonight. It's a man's game in here. Hey! Interference! It's a mile for the puck! Jenner! Go, 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 go! Stall and Tardif go one minute! Lots of talk to each other, help each other out. FedEx, you got one. Tell Stall, stay out, stay out. You got, come on, get out, get out. Oh, get out. Okay, sorry, he's got him. Stand him up. Two on twos, boys. Stand him up, eh? Steve! Back! Horrible, come on. Don't get trapped. Steve, referee gave me a warning, like shooting the puck like you did. I didn't shoot it. I didn't think you did, but... Let's just get him through, H, in any way we can here. Yeah. He's on you, so yeah, I didn't you're going to have to be really careful tonight. Good job, Younger. Good job. Get the line. Put her in. Make the forwards go to work here, boys. Just keep her simple. Bucks in, bucks out. We're the only one that got it. What's that? We're going to tend for diving. Holy smoly. Oh. Nice hit. Nice hit, boys. This is a hard work game, boys. These guys have, are in here for a mission, and we've got to battle through it. This is your world, where you get ready for movie night, a gaming session, or some downtime. In your world, every little thing has to be just right. Because every little thing matters. Welcome to ultra-fast unlimited internet, flexible TV, and a powerful network to make it all happen your way. Welcome to a world of your very own. We are live at the Peterborough Memorial Center. This is the OHL tonight on TV Kojuko. I'm Terry Doyle, the Plymouth Whalers leading the Peterborough Peets 2-0 after 20 minutes of play in the Peets. All five of their regulation losses this season have come when trailing after, or actually uh, have come when the opponent does score the first goal in the hockey game. And we'll see what happened in this game. And Derek Merlini, the former Erie Otter, scores his second goal of the season at 329 of the opening period from Evan Brophy. And then Andrew Forney with his 11th on the campaign. Merlini getting the assist along with my guest here at the intermission, James Neal at 1909. And that was on a delayed penalty. The Whalers have taken a 2-0 lead in this hockey game so far after 20 minutes. Here is the first goal for the Whalers. Brophy with the backhand shot when airborne. Sean's made the save. He came back to the point. And inside the blue line, Merlini did a smart play. Just put the puck right back on goal. And he scored his second of the year. 1-0 Whalers at that point in time. Here's another look at it. The puck bouncing around. Came back to the point. And Merlini shot. Shantz didn't see a whole lot of it. Beat him to the glove side. As for the other goal, this was a delayed penalty for the Whalers. Merlini got the shot on goal. Rebound came out and then right back into the slot. And Fournier left right alone as the Whalers indeed had an extra player on the ice on the delayed penalty. And Fournier all smiles to score his 11th goal of the season. And 2-0 our score after 20 minutes of play. Back with the second period in a moment. This is the OHL tonight presented by Andon Bath Center on TV Kojiko. This is your world, where you get ready for movie night, a gaming session, or some downtime. In your world, every little thing has to be just right. Because every little thing matters. Welcome to ultra-fast unlimited internet, flexible TV, and a powerful network to make it all happen your way. Welcome to a world of your very own. We're back, and the second period is underway. The Peterborough Peets and the Plymouth Whalers, two to nothing for the Whalers as the Peets bring that puck down into Plymouth territory. Peets have it in front of that, bouncing around there. Ryder took a swat at it. Now it's cleared out through center, and in across the lines comes Collins, hands it back. There's a shot, and the drive taken there by Vigilante. Finally, as the Peets net comes off its moorings, we get a whistle on the play. 
Shots. David Schantz caught going left and then back to his right and with a little bit of pressure in front of the net. John Vigilante at the side of the net. The uh, moorings did come loose behind the Pete's goaltender down to our right here in this second period of play. Mike Bellucci checks out his lineup here for the Whalers. Was pretty pleased though with a 2-0 lead heading to the second period. All right, puck's going to be dropped here to the right of the net. Whalers get it. Back to the blue line, Marilini, as we now get an interference call here right from the faceoff. It was indeed a faceoff interference call, you could even say, for the Whalers. Gino Paisolini got tied up with Jordan Stahl. Stahl was going to try to go to the left point, and he was tied up by Paisolini. And that's something the officials have been instructed to call. And I know some of the coaches in the last couple of years wanted them to call it, but now with the extra crackdown this year, Face-off interference is being called more, and the Peets go back on the power play. In across the line they come. They're down there by Reddix. Slides around behind the net, picked up by Stahl on the far side, feeds it back to the blue line. Nice effort there by Hendricks to keep it in. His shot goes wide of the net. Rebound out near the blue line. Reddix takes a whack at it. Around, back out to the blue line. Hendricks to Reddix. Reddix back to Hendricks. Here's Hendricks with a shot. Leg save there by Peters as he got the skate out on that just in time as a penalty comes up here to the Peterborough Peets. To the Whalers. Or to the Whalers, rather. McGinnis is going to go off for yeah. high sticking. He got tied up with Jordan Morrison in front of the net. Right, he was tied up with Morrison in front of the net. And it seemed to take uh, Peters a bit of time to get up and... Uh, he kind of, when he did get to his feet, seemed to kind of stagger around there just a little bit, but obviously he's okay. Now, this discussion is where the faceoff is going to be. It was blown down when the puck had come back up to center ice, but referee Joe Park took his time blowing the play down. The Whalers had the puck, and a bit of a slow call. Jordan Morrison sort of uh, kicked his head back a little bit to uh, emphasize the uh, High stick from uh, McGinnis, and the Peets now on a two-man advantage. Here's Stahl. Stahl brings it in, wraps it off the boards behind the net, goes to Morrison on the far side. Morrison back to Tardif. Tardif to Morrison, feeds it back to the blue line. Back and forth, Hendricks has it now. There's Hendricks, shot comes in front. Peterson a save, and the Peets pick up the rebound this time. Here it is sliding in, Reddix. He flipped it in near the net. They battle for it off to the side of the goal. Into the corner they go. Letizia there for the, uh, the Plymouth, but now the Peets have it. Hendricks moving it around, feeds it to the side. That comes right in front. Peters slides across, and Morrison can't get much of a shot away on that. Once again, Reddix. He slips it in low along the ice, picked up here. Back to Reddix again. Here's Reddix right to the side of that. There's a shot. Peters the same score. Stall, Jordan Stall, standing right there in front of the net. It took a couple of opportunities and a couple of whacks at it, but finally they get that puck behind Justin Peters. Peters made some nice saves during this uh, situation here for the Peets right here, waiting down and right back up. Made the save on Tardif, but the puck came right back out to the top of the crease and Stahl there to bury it before Letitia could take him in front of the net. And Jordan Stahl impressing the scouts here, scoring his 15th goal of the season for the Peets. And they will remain on the power play for another 108. This goal coming at 2:02 of the opening of the second period. All right, all set to go now. Two to one, the score. The Plymouth Whalers still in the lead. Pete's win that puck from the faceoff, bringing it in across the line. Coletta chases it into the corner, doesn't get to it in time. It's sent around the boards, and the Whalers find an opening and shoot it down the ice. It goes right to goaltender David Schantz. He leaves it there for defenseman Aaron Dawson. Here comes Dawson now. Up to center, flips it over the other side, finding its way onto the stick of Daniel Ryder, and Ryder, and trying to put it back, missing everybody, comes all the way down the ice. And Kyle Raftis has to hustle back to get it. He was being chased by Vigilante. Now here's Dawson. Dawson gets as far as center, wraps it around the boards, into the corner on the other side. Pete's picked that up down here, trying to center it back to the blue line, but nobody was there, and the puck was all the way down the ice. Left there by the goaltender. Maybe a bit of a miscue there. Fournier comes after it, but it's taken away from him as the Pete start back. Bet ahead now to Colada. Colada leaves it for Ryder. Here's Ryder, rink wide over there to Raftus. Raftus gets it up. There's a shot right on by Pawlowski. And again, we see Justin Peters jumping on that to make the save. Peters has been solid for the Whalers tonight. 
making 20 saves already. Shots on goal, 21. Now to Kalata. Kalata leaves it for Ryder. Here's Ryder, rink wide over there to Raftus. Raftus gets it up. There's a shot right on by Pabowski. And again, we see Justin Peters jumping on that to make the save. Peters has been solid for the Whalers tonight. Making 20 saves already. Shots on goal 21-7. But Peters definitely seems to be a little bit more energized here. <laughs> As opposed to his time recently with the Majors. Very inconsistent with uh, the Toronto St. Michael's Majors this season. But now if uh, four periods and a little bit as an indication, it's got his game back so far here for Plymouth. Tardif shot goes off a leg, deflects wide, and then it's cleared by the Whalers down the ice. Nobody touching it. That'll be an icing call against Plymouth. Trevor Hendricks of the Peets over Rager right now with a plus 11 rating, and that's something he's worked on over the last year or so is his defensive game. He saw it a couple seasons ago, sometimes struggling in his own end while being able to chip in on offense, but Hendricks has done some solid work in his own end. Now the pucks along the boards here on this side, down on the Plymouth end. Tardif has it. There's Tardif, his shot. Calmly steered away by Peters again. They move it around in the corner, goes behind the net. Backhand there, taking a swat was James Neal. Failed to get it out, though. Back in the corner for Tardif. Tardif gives it to Stahl. Here's Stahl trying to move in front, but it went off McGinnis' stick. Back into the corner again. Stahl goes after it once more. Now Tardif. Tardif gives it to Stahl. Stahl behind the net. Finding somebody to give it to. There's a shot. That bounces wide of the goal. And we get a stoppage in the play there. And the faceoff will be just inside the... Plymouth blue line. A shot from the right point going off a stick and up into the netting. In front of a, what I would think would be about 3,200 here at the Memorial Center, maybe even a few more. Yeah, for, for the uh, considering the weather conditions, a really nice crowd here tonight. You can't see all the way up no. into the old grays up on the balcony, but uh, this looks like a pretty decent crowd here, maybe even pushing 34. Yeah. Yeah, the good, good crowd. Here come the Whalers again. There's a shot right on as they skated right in there. That was uh, John Armstrong who moved right in, got the shot away on Shantz, but Shantz held his ground on that one. And Shantz able to just be uh, confident his defenders would take away any pass. He was able to remain square to the shooter on that, made the save and stayed right there to cover up on the rebound. Face off to the right of the net. Beats have it. Around behind the goal, Pulowski, he was knocked off the puck. Whalers trying to center it. Can't do it. Ward tries his luck. Puts it right into the body of one of the fallen Peets down there just inside the blue line. And uh, we get a stoppage in the play. I believe that was uh, Sorial who had dropped in front of that shot. And on your screen right now, I'm just going to say Bob Sestito and Sescon having a few words. These two uh, former teammates as members of the Whalers and uh, a couple weeks ago when the Mississauga Ice Dogs, Sescon's former team took on the Whalers. Those two had some words in that game as well. So we'll see if over the course of this game, they might decide to uh, get together with the gloves off. Rofi for the Whalers. And for the Peterborough Peets, Daniel Ryder. From that draw, the puck was sliding all the way down the ice. There's Ryder taking a spot at it. Gets it to Stewart in the corner. Stewart being tied up. Puck comes loose. Peets have it. Trying to skate it around in front. Getting a shot away. And getting it back again was a Ryder. He feeds it back to the blue line, up into the corner to Stewart. Behind the net, Liam Reddix. Reddix right there, decides to come back this way, turns around, gets a shot right on Peters, the save, it's in front of the goal! And Ryder got another shot, and I believe Peters got the leg out and knocked that away as well. Fox cleared down the ice by the Whalers. Peters showing his stuff here at the Memorial Center in Peterborough tonight as we have that puck being cleared all the way down the ice, so the Peets will be called for icing. See Daniel Ryder, of course, scored that shootout winning goal a couple weeks back when the Peets were in Plymouth. And there is reinforcing that, the uh, shootout winning goal there. Three weeks ago, that was U.S. Thanksgiving weekend when the uh, Peterborough Peets made the trip down uh, to southwestern Ontario and into Michigan because the Festival of Trees was going on here. Our close call in front of the Peterborough net as the puck somehow found itself loose right there in front of that goal, and the Whalers, a couple of them got a whack at it. And uh, Shantz had to make one save. 
So Jared Bull cruising in front of the night. He's back in action after the first period scrap with Justin Caruana. That came right after the Whalers had taken a 2 nothing lead. Caruana trying to pump up his teammates a little bit. Back to the point. There's a shot deflected right to Shantz. That came in by uh, Shepley, his shot from the blue line. Zach Shepley, a solid uh, defensive defenseman for the Whalers. Put up some decent offensive numbers uh, in previous years. Right now, though, uh, pretty quiet in that department with three assists, but uh, a player that just takes care of his own end predominantly for Plymouth. Hendrick skates off into the corner. He's jammed in there now. As the puck comes loose out in front, it comes out into the faceoff circle and gobbled up there by Trevor Hendricks. Hendricks takes it, shoots it down the ice, and ends up back and behind the Whalers net. Now the Whalers will try to break out Bowl. Bowl hands it off there as he's set, finds its way to McGinnis. McGinnis shoots it down the ice. Deep into Peterborough territory, the Peets pick it up. Pass broken up there by Fournier. Fournier just turns its center and rifles it right back down into the Peterborough corner. Now the Peets off the boards. It's going all the way down the ice this time, and it'll be an icing call against the Peets. Peterborough Peets with the new, uh, or the Memorial Center with the new scoreboard at center ice. And in case you uh, joined us late, it's uh, not operational so far. It looks good, but. Uh, well, it's partially operational. <laughs> it's operational. <laughs> yes, we can see the time and we can see the shots, but. Uh, the screens are dark. They weren't, uh, the city was not, and the uh, installers here at the Memorial Center were not able to have it ready and fully operational for tonight's game. They're hoping to have it Saturday. If not, there are two games between Christmas and New Year's, including New Year's Eve here against the Owen Sound Attack, so they hope to have it up and running by then. Here's the chase for the puck going on down there. Zach Harnden goes after it, feeds it across the goal mouth, but the Whalers pick it up and clear it down the ice. Back there to get it, Kyle Raffles. Raffles shoots it around on the boards here on this side. Stahl, he's pushed along the boards. The puck squirts loose out over the blue line. Taken here by Letizia. And then it's cleared back in behind the net. And uh, now the Peets with it. Stahl. Here's Stahl. Over to Raftis. Raftis off his stick, but getting it over there on that other side. Hardened it again. Hardened and feeds it back in behind the net. Into the corner on this side. Pete's making some personnel changes on the ice. Kept in there by Tardiff in that corner. Tardiff sent it by the net. Cleared away by the defense. And now down the ice come the Whalers. That's Gaynor on the far side. Gaynor, he's being shoved off the puck by Pelowski. Puck just lying there loose. Ends up coming back in behind the net. Now Raftus again. That's Raftus. He's being bumped back in there. Just missed a, a check by Sacito. And then it's taken by the Whalers and cleared right down to Peterborough goaltender David Schatz. Cleared around the boards. The Peets start the rush from there. Pass from Pelowski. Out over the blue line. The Peets have it at center. And Pelowski able to dump it down into the Whalers zone again. The Whalers now. They start another rush. Pass missed everybody. Comes inside the Peterborough line. Gobbled up there by Hendricks. He gives it ahead to Stewart. His shot knocked down. Ends up going to the boards on the other side. In there is Ryder to get it. Ryder shoots it off into the corner, finds its way to Brophy. Brophy trying to clear it, comes out in front of the goal, but nobody could get a hold of it to get a shot away. And here come the Whalers rushing down the ice, pass, and a shot right on, knocked away by Schantz as that came in from the stick of Brophy. Into the corner on the near side. It's bouncing there right at the side of the net. Whalers have it. Now back and behind the goal, centered out, comes right near the goal, just off to the corner actually, a swat taken, missed. Fed back into the Peterborough corner again. In there, two players jabbing together. Daniel Ryder and Evan Brophy. In the corner, Brophy has it, feeds it back to the blue line. There's a shot, that goes off the leg of Schantz. And the Peets pick it up. There's Greg Stewart with a drive, whistled that high and wide of the Plymouth net. Rebound comes all the way back out through center. Cleared back in behind the Peterborough net again. The Peets will retrieve it there. Now Pelowski. Actually, that's Young. Young feeds it ahead to Morrison. Morrison shot in across the blue line, went nowhere, and the Whalers steered back down the ice again. Back here to get it is Brian Young. Flips in the air, comes down along the boards inside the Peterborough line. Now a race for it. McGinnis gets there first, gives it out there onto the stick of Ward. Ward. Knocks it into the corner, then he's knocked down himself, chasing after it. There is Armstrong. 
Armstrong turning in the corner. Two players bumped together in there as well. That's bowl for the Plymouth Whalers. They dig it loose. Puck ends up going back in near the, the back end of the Peterborough net. Right at the side, they poke away at it. Knocked off there by Schantz. Into the corner again comes Armstrong. Armstrong, he's being knocked off the puck. Pete's picked that up. Aaron Dawson now finds its way out through center ice as the Peets decide to let that go, sliding all the way down into the Whalers' end. Now the Whalers flipping it in the air to Bowl. Bowl comes down near the blue line, shot down and behind, beside, I should say, the Peter Bronette in the corner. It'll be picked up at that point by Harnden. It's flipped out through. Neal tried to catch up with it for the Whalers, ends up going back and behind the Plymouth net. Here's the pass along the boards on the other side. Dumped through, through center by Zelani. His shot, that whistles wide of the Peterborough net. Now one of the Peets injured on the far side. Play continues through center. Down the ice they go, trying to get it near the net. That was Harnden. His shot went wide, and the Whalers bring it back out through center again. That was Tardiff, the injured player. He's back up and chasing after the puck into the corner again. One of the Whalers falls inside the Peterborough net. Here's the pass across to Stahl. Stahl over there across to Harnden, but we get a whistle as he was way offside inside that blue line. Jamie Tardiff taking an Aaron High stick from uh, teammate Mark Pulaski. Pulaski got tied up with one of the Whalers deep in the zone. And there you see right there Pulaski the stick getting tied up with a Whaler player and Tardiff taking it right in the kisser as well. And then a little bit later, I believe it was Pulaski who hooked down one of the Plymouth players going to the net. And that's why uh, Plymouth alternate captain Steve Ward had him in award with the referee as Tardiff trying to uh, shake off the cobwebs a little bit at the bench. Face off out in neutral territory. Goes to the bench on the other side. A penalty coming up here to the Peets, probably for charging. As the puck goes down into the corner deep in Peterborough territory, and is touched there by Ryder. And well, it's going to be high sticking. Interesting. Charging would have been the obvious well, one. Well, I thought he left his feet. It looked to me like he left his feet. And uh, Stewart definitely went airborne on the hit <laughs> on the far side. Well, anyway, it's going to be a high sticking penalty, and there goes Stewart off to the penalty box. Plymouth yeah. now will go on the uh, the power play right now. Not able to score on the power play in this game, but definitely have been able to score, beating David Schatz twice with 9.15 to go here in the second period. Well, Brophy's going to leave the faceoff circle. And moving in as Neal to do the honors against Ryder. Shot taken here by the Peets as they just bank it off the boards and all the way down the ice. Back to get it, Steve Ward. That's him starting out from behind his own net, passing it ahead. This is on the stick of Neal again. Neal skates down the near boards, gets it into the corner, stop there by the Peets. They pick it up and just whip it all the way down the ice. Right to goaltender Justin Peters. Peters leaves it there at the side of his net. Whalers Ward again along the boards here on this side, gets in across that Peterborough blue line, drops it back to Brophy. Brophy just shoots it up along the boards, comes back to Brophy again. Here's Brophy trying to shovel it over there on that Far side to Letizia, but that didn't work. And the Peets dig for it in the corner, deep in their own zone. They'll hold it there long enough for a whistle with 8.25 remaining in period number two. Good play by Hendricks just to tie the puck up in the corner. Clock continued to roll, and eventually referee Joe Park deciding enough was enough, and the faceoff will come to the right of shots. The Peets changing up their penalty killers. It will be Tardiff, Dawson, and Stahl out there for Peter Brown on the far side uh, Kyle Raftus on the penalty kill for the Peets as well. In there Tardiff takes the face off for the Peets. Sacito for the Whalers as they have it down in that Peter Brown corner. A lot of activity going on in that corner down there recently. Now out in front there's a shot that changed directions in front of the Peter Brown goal. Magettis took the original shot from out near the blue line. Whalers again keep it in here. They're still on the power play. There's another shot knocked away. Players falling all over the place in front of that Peterborough net. It's right there at the side of the goal, but this time on top of it is David Schatz. Plymouth now with 15 shots on goal here in the hockey game. A few words being exchanged. Aaron Dawson getting a shot in there, and a penalty is going to come out of this. Yeah. And Tardiff is headed to the penalty box on sportsmanlike conduct is going to be the call to Tardiff, so the Whalers will go on a two-man advantage for the next 41 seconds. And an opportunity for Plymouth to try to restore their two-goal lead. So 
Uh, the referee, Joe Park, uh, something in that scrum he did not like very much. No, something happened there. That, sent uh, Tardif off for unsportsmanlike conduct. All right, the face off to the right of the Peterborough net. There's the puck dropped. Taken here, the Peets find an opening and just send it down the ice. Hustling back in here to get it for the Whalers, Zach Shepley. Now down the far side, Vigilante. Vigilante is stopped inside the Peterborough blue line. It's knocked away, and here's a race for the puck. For Peterborough, there's a shot right on by Ryder and knocked away by Justin Peters, the goaltender. Whalers now, Collins feeds it through, gets it to Vigilante on this side, along the boards, dumps it off into the corner. Back to Vigilante again. Here's Vigilante on the other side, moving it around. Ward now, Ward winds up. There's a shot right on, safe made. And then it goes over top of the Peterborough net as the one penalty has expired. And now the Pete's just one man short. One minute, nine seconds remaining in that penalty. Comes around the boards. The Pete's pick it up deep in their own zone and shoot it down the ice. Back here they come after it. Vigilante is there first. He's turning the side of his own net, hands it off to Ward. Ward, rink wide pass, finds its way to McGinnis. McGinnis steps in across that Peterborough line, trying to hand it back here. Fournier is trying to get parked in front of that net. Ends up going in the corner over there to Bowl. Bowl drops it back. That's Fournier. Fournier sends it out near the blue line now. Over here on this side, there's McGinnis with a drive right on. Save made by Schantz. Hangs on. Fournier right there looking for a rebound. Taking an extra whack on shots, and that had Aaron Dawson sending Fournier from the front of the crease. And that's something the defensemen are uh, still getting used to is what they can and cannot get away with in front of the net, both before and uh, after the whistle, especially before the whistle, in terms of clearing the front of the net before you could uh, pound the guy in the back with the cross check. But uh, that's something definitely being called, and the defensemen still getting used to that in front of the net, and goaltenders having to deal with a lot more traffic for the most part this season. Beat shoot that puck off the glass, but it took a funny hop there and stayed inside the blue line momentarily. Took a second effort to get it out. Now Bull. Bull along the near boards, got it in across the blue line, only to lose it. Out through center, Fournier turns. Here's Fournier. He's trying to cut in front of that Peterborough, and that puts it in front of the goal, but unable to catch up with it there was Brophy. Brophy on this side has the puck. Trying to find an open man. They're still with the extra man advantage on the ice. Comes right to the goaltender. He knocks it away. And now out of the box comes Tardiff. And the Peets are back to full strength. Out to near the blue line. And the shot taken there by the Plymouth Whalers Letizia. Over there on that far side now. It bounces across the ice over to this board on this side and then cleared down the ice. And the Whalers tease you back in there behind his own neck. Try to clear it down the ice. Looks like it's going to be icing, and it is, as nobody can catch up with it. And the puck will be brought back all the way back down into Plymouth territory. Craig Sescon will be our second intermission guest here at the Memorial Center. We'll talk about the deal from the Mississauga Ice Dogs. Mississauga making another move shortly after the Sescon trade, moving overage goaltender Michael Lozas, who's been the main reason why the Ice Dogs have been in any of their games pretty much this season, moving him to the Owen Sound attack as the attack looked to battle in the Midwest Division. Over along the far boards, a swat taken at the puck there. Sliding down the ice, just in across the Peterborough blue line. The Pete's regrouping here. Trying to feed it out through center. Broken up, though. That's center by Sestito as uh, he's hammered along the boards there. The puck comes around behind the net, and the Pete start back. Here comes Morrison with a shot right on. Peters the save. Rebound. Kept into the blue line. There's another drive right on. And again, Peters makes the save on that. And we have a penalty call as one of the Peets down on the ice back in behind the net. Caruana taking a high stick as he was cutting through to the front of the net. And it looks like for the Whalers, Tom Sestito is going to go off. Sestito having a few words with uh, Sescon at the whistle. And before that, getting involved with Patrick Coletta and uh, hit along the far boards by Mark Pulaski. So Sestito all over the ice on that shift and will go off for high sticking at 15.04. Pete's going on their seventh power play. Have been successful once so far in the game. Here's the face off right there near the Plymouth net is lying there. It comes back to the blue line to Hendricks. Hendricks over here to Naslin. Back to Hendricks again. Hendricks started to wind up, then pass the puck off. Score! 
shot coming in from the far side. Some nice passing plays out there. And finally, as it got fed across the ice over there, and uh, I believe it'll be getting that final shot away. It's Reddick's on the far it's side Reddick's. here. Yep. But watch, it is but redirected by Paisolini on the way through. I believe that's who touched it. It definitely went off oh, the yeah. stick before getting behind Justin Peters. It will be Liam Reddick's yeah. scoring the power play goal for Peterborough, his 11th of the season. But the Pete's were moving that puck around there. Some good passing. Finally, found the opening they were looking for and have tied this game with four minutes and 44 seconds remaining in the second period here at the Peterborough Memorial Center. Down the ice comes Dawson. There's Dawson's. His shot ends up going back and behind that. Comes around on this side. Now, taken there by Isolini. There's it down into the Peterborough end. It's near the front of the net. Gobbled up there by Jordan Stahl. Stahl sends it down the ice. Ends up rolling back and behind the net. Comes right in front. Oh, boy, and that almost caught Peters out of position as the puck very quickly found itself in front of the net with Stahl. And Peters had to recover from that very quickly. That gave everybody a couple of heart flutters here in the arena. Peter Pete's on the verge of taking a 3-2 lead here, a very dangerous opportunity right in front of Justin Peters. You see the puck coming right out in front and a shot, and Peters having some difficulty. And the Peter Pete's not able to solve Peters there, but a dangerous opportunity in front of the Whalers' net. Now Reddix. Reddix bounces it in off the boards in the corner there, comes back to Reddix again. Reddix turns, he's pulled off the puck, and the Whalers able to bring it down the ice. There's a shot, that's knocked away by Schantz down at the other end. Puck goes back and behind the net. Young will hand it off to Ryder. Ryder ahead to Stewart. Stewart trying to get around that last check there. Two of them along the boards on the other side. Now Ryder gets loose. Here's Ryder trying to cut it in front of the net. Nice play there by Shepley to knock the puck away from Ryder. And back down the ice comes Collins. Collins in across that line, drops it back here. Onto the stick of McGinnis. McGinnis now has put it in front of the net, but the Pete starts back. Over here is Ryder along the boards, trying to put it in, in front of the goal, knocked away by Peters. And the Peets couldn't pick up the rebound. And back down the ice come the Whalers again. This is Armstrong trying to cut it in front of the net, forced back and behind the goal. Armstrong. Can he find a man to give it to? Does. Over there in the corner, comes near the front of the net. Peter Rowe defense trying to knock that away. Reddix does from his knees, gets a backhander away, and sends it all the way down the ice, but it will be an icing call against the Peets. So the Peets now with a little more energy here in the period. They've put up uh, plenty of shots on Peters, but it just seems like they've got a little bit more jump in their step, and that has helped tie this hockey game at two. They've given the goal to Greg Stewart from Reddick's along with Trevor Hendricks saying that it was Stewart who tipped the puck in. It is his 11th goal of the season at 15-16. Beats have it. Back here, Ryder hands it along the boards on this side. Now it's out through center to Morrison. Morrison lets it go. Bounces off the boards around on the other side. Some players run together. Whalers fail to clear it. Now they have another opportunity at it. Getting it as far as center ice to bowl over here on this side. There's a shot that goes wide of the Peterborough net. Rebound out near the blue line. Another shot comes in, knocked away by Shantz. Behind the net, Peterborough banking it off the boards. Picked up out in center ice territory there by Shepley this time. He shoots it back and across the line as the Peets shoot it down the ice. Nobody could touch it again this time. And we have another icing call. Coming up at the second intermission, we'll uh, talk to the newest Pete Craig Sescon. We'll also take a look at what's happening around the Ontario Hockey League this evening and a special Christmas feature coming up for you at the second intermission from here at the Memorial Center. The second period being brought to you by Andon Bath Center and Bill Story, Pontiac Buick GMC, as they get set to face off deep in Peterborough territory. Pasolini moves in to uh, take the draw back to the line. There's a shot right on and the rebound got away from Schantz but the defense moved in to pick it up. Now Stahl. Here comes Stahl across the line. Gets a shot right on. Peters the save. There's another drive on the rebound. That went off the body of Fournier. It's bouncing around in front of that goal and Fournier gets the loose puck and manages to feed it out through center ice. It goes sliding down the ice back and behind the Peterborough net and back to get it as Dawson. Dawson leaving it for Kyle Raftis. 
Raftus over along the boards and this side cleared ahead now to Stahl. Here comes Stahl and across the line. He falls. The puck's lying loose in front of the net. But unable to get to it there for Peterborough was harmed and as he was knocked down and is cleared down the ice by the Whalers. Left there by Shantz. Shantz feeds it up to the Plymouth blue line. It's dumped into the corner by Tardiff. Whalers start the rush from back in there. Flipped out through center ice. Here comes Vigilante. Vigilante in across the line. A backhand shot scores. It was knocked away to the side of the net, but one of the other Plymouth players was uh, skating by on the other side, and I believe that was Dan Collins who will get credit. I think it just bounced off him and in past Shantz. You saw it right there. Shantz making the save on the vigilante shot, but Collins cruising right in front of the net. It bounced off him and in his 23rd goal of the season for the Whalers, and none easier than that. Or as he just had to cruise right towards the front of the net, bounced off him, and the Whalers have restored the lead 3 to 2. There's a shot from Peterborough, went in, knocked away by Justin Peters, and then it's cleared right down the ice. Into the corner here on this side, now less than one minute to go in period number two. Plymouth ahead, three to two, and this one is the Peets deep in their own zone over there to Hendricks in the far corner. Hendricks now pass out here to Stewart. Here comes Stewart trying to get around that final defenseman, gets a backhand shot away but missed the open corner on the near side. Peets have to retreat through center. Over here now, Raftus. Raftus gets it ahead to Stewart. Stewart can't get by the defenseman and it's gobbled up there by Vigilante again. Vigilante, his weak shot comes out over the blue line, manages to get a hold of it and poke it back down into the Peterborough end. Puck ends up back and behind the Peterborough net. Pete's able to shovel it out through center ice, taken here by the Plymouth Whalers, back and across the Peterborough line again. It's into the side of that, knocked away by the defense. Raftus around the boards to this side. There's a shot coming in, knocked down from in front of the net as the buzzer sounds. And the second period brought to you by and Bath Center and Bill Story, Pontiac Buick GMC, has come to an end. And so after two periods of play in this game tonight here at the Peterborough Memorial Center, the Plymouth Whalers lead the Peterborough Peets by a score of 3-2. to two. Shots on goal in this hockey game so far. The Peets out shooting Plymouth 33-22. But on the scoreboard, 3-2 to two is the score. The Plymouth Whalers in the lead. Well, Terry Doyle, as usual, making his way down to ice level. He is expecting a special guest to come along to chat with him during this Intermission. So Terry is making his way through the crowd down into the area. I believe he's in position now. And his special guest this time around, well, one of the uh, the newest member of the uh, Peterborough Peets. So let's head downstairs, and here is Terry Doyle. Thank you, Bob. Here is Craig Suscon and Craig, uh, trade happening earlier this week. Uh, your thoughts now after uh, two periods here in Peterborough? Oh, it's uh, such a different tempo on this team. You know, uh, we got guys battling uh, shift in and shift out, so... Uh, Hopefully we can turn around to third and get a big win. It's a case where uh, in Mississauga it's a younger team trying to build and I'm sure that's where you got caught up a little bit there being a veteran player wanting to see some results now and I'm sure uh, that's why when you found out it was Peterborough I'm sure you must have been pretty happy. Oh yeah you know I want to go to a contender where uh, we're going to go for the Mem Cup and uh, win the OHL so uh, that wasn't really the case in Mississauga there it's more of a rebuilding year so uh, I'm just really glad to be here. Talking to Jeff Tui during the week, he thought that maybe your role here will make suit you a little bit more. And in a case, not only a better supporting cast around you as well, better forwards coming back in your own zone. Are you confident that, you know, obviously with some of the special teams going on, ice time hasn't been huge in this game so far, especially in the first, but you're more comfortable right now so far as this game's gone on? Oh, yeah, I uh, feel like I'm fitting in real great, and uh, I'm just here to do uh, whatever they want me to do, and any anything I can do to help this team win, uh, I'll do it. Your other, your, uh, other former team is the Plymouth Whalers. I'm sure you must still know plenty of players on that side. Oh yeah, it's always uh, fun playing against your uh, ex-teammates and ex-teams, so uh, I don't know, I just want to get a win here tonight. <laughs> Have you got a running thing going with Tom Sestito? Uh, yeah, we were, uh, we were buddies back in Plymouth, but uh, you know, you're not, you don't have any buddies on the ice, so uh, yeah, we got a little thing going. <laughs>
I noticed that. I noticed it when you were in Mississauga as well. Finally, down 3-2 after uh, two periods. What has to happen here in the third? Uh, you know, we're not getting the best bounces, but uh, we're all, I think we're all playing them, so hopefully uh, we can put the puck in the net and uh, get the big win. Well, Craig, welcome to Peterborough. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you. That's Craig Sesko, the newest Peterborough Pete's defenseman, playing with Mark Pulaski as the third unit on the Peterborough defense here tonight. Right now, the Plymouth Whalers lead by a score of 3-2 to two through 40 minutes. Coming up on the other side of the break, we'll take a look at what's happening around the Ontario Hockey League on this Thursday evening. All the games are underway despite the snowstorm. It is 3-2 Whalers after two. Back with more in a moment. This is the OHL Tonight, presented by Ann and Bass Center on TV Coach Call. This is your world, where you get ready for movie night, a gaming session, or some downtime. In your world, every little thing has to be just right. Because every little thing matters. Welcome to ultra-fast unlimited internet, flexible TV, and a powerful network to make it all happen your way. Welcome to a world of your very own. Three two, the Plymouth Whalers lead the Peterborough Peets through 40 minutes. Welcome back to the Peterborough Memorial Center. I'm Terry Doyle. Thanks for joining us on the OHL tonight. Time now to check out what's happening around the Ontario Hockey League on this Thursday night. Three other games scheduled, and all of them are underway here this evening. There were some question marks because of the snow, but uh, right now we can tell you the Windsor Spitfires lead the Sudbury Wolves by a score of two to nothing. All these games in the uh, second period of play. Elsewhere, it is the Toronto St. Michael's Majors doubling up on the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds by a score of 2-1. to one. The Greyhounds had uh, made the trip a little bit early to, to avoid the storm. And the Owen Sound attack and Barry Colts all tied at 1 late in the second period at the Barry Molson Center. Last night in the OHL, is the Guelph Storm with a 3-1 win over the Owen Sound attack last night. The first game for Michael Lozes, the former Ice Dogs goaltender, getting the uh, start there, but uh, falling 3-1 did the Owen Sound attack against the Guelph Storm. Tomorrow night here on TV Kojiko, we'll have the Peterborough Peets right back in action. Their second game of this three games and three night stretch this weekend as they take on the Kingston Frontenacs. We'll have it for you live from the Limestone City here on the OHL tonight, beginning at 7.30. And then coming up Saturday night, the Peets round out the weekend action and round out the pre-Christmas schedule with a date against the Branton Battalion and we'll have that for you as well right here on the OHL tonight beginning at 7 o'clock here on TV Coach Go. Right now the Plymouth Whalers lead 3-2 to two over the Peets through 40 minutes of play two periods either way it all works out. This is the OHL tonight presented by Ann and Bass Center on TV Coach Go. This is your world, where you get ready for movie night, a gaming session, or some downtime. In your world, every little thing has to be just right. Because every little thing matters. Welcome to ultra-fast unlimited internet, flexible TV, and a powerful network to make it all happen your way. Welcome to a world of your very own. Here at the Peterborough Memorial Center, the Plymouth Whalers have gone to the room with a 3-2 lead over the Peterborough Peets through 40 minutes of play. Let's get you caught up on what has happened in the first two periods of this hockey game as we get set for the third. And right now we can go back to the opening frame. Derek Merlini, the overage defenseman, scoring his second goal of the season at 329. And then Andrew Fournier, his 11th of the year from Merlini and James Neal at 1909, gave the Whalers a 2-0 lead after one period of play. In the second period, the Peets got on the board and a goal by Jordan Stahl, his 15th of the year from Tardif and Reddix at 202. And then it was Greg Stewart's 11th goal of the season from Reddix and Hendricks on another power play for Peterborough. That came at 15-16 and it tied the game at two. But before the two teams went to the room after 40, it was Dan Collins scoring his 23rd of the year from John Vigilante and Evan Brophy at 1850. And it was 3-2 at that point in time. And that's where we stand heading into the third period of play. As for the goal, 
goals as they happen here. First of all, in the opening period, it was a chance right in front of the net for the Whalers. Came back towards the point. Merlini with a simple shot on goal, put it over the shoulder of David Shunch. You get a better look at it from the end zone shot here as the puck comes back to the point. A little bouncing puck that eventually found its way back to Merlini. He takes the shot and it just goes between the players and over the shoulder of Shantz. one nothing for the Whalers at that point in time. Then Merlini puts the puck on goal. A save by Shantz, but right out into the slot. Andrew Fournier gets the puck and he buries it on the delayed penalty. And it was 2 nothing for the Whalers. Into the second period now, Jordan Stahl cruising towards the front of the net. You see big number 11 there. The Pete's moving the puck around. A nice opportunity here by Tardif. He's denied by Peters, but Stahl right there at the edge of the crease. Scores for Peterborough, his 15th of the year. And then the Pete's on another power play later on in the period. And this time the puck comes over to Liam Reddix. His shot tipped on the way through. They've given the goal to Greg Stewart, his 11th of the year. And the Pete's had tied it at two, but then with about a minute 10 to go in the period. John Vigilante comes in over the line. He takes a backhand shot. It's stopped by shots, but the rebound knocked in by Collins for his 23rd of the season. And that's where we stand heading to the third period. 3-2 Whalers back to drop the puck on the third period in a moment. It's the OHL tonight presented by Inn and Bath Center on TV Kojiko. This is your world, where you get ready for movie night, a gaming session, or some downtime. In your world, every little thing has to be just right. Because every little thing matters. Welcome to ultra-fast unlimited internet, flexible TV, and a powerful network to make it all happen your way. Welcome to a world of your very own. Here at the Peterborough Memorial Center, the Peterborough Peets and the Plymouth Whalers. The third period just underway. Whalers ahead 3-2 to two as the puck's down in Peterborough territory. Here come the Peets now. Greg Stewart breaking out of his own zone across center, trying to find a man to hand the puck back, who ends up sending it back in behind the net. In behind the goal, a poke and shove there. It comes loose, gobbled up by Shepley. And now Shepley. He feeds it out through center and across the line pass to the boards on the other side comes in front as Brophy tried to slide it near the side of the Peterborough net but nobody was there and now it's along the boards on this side with a Pete seven Daniel Ryder he flips it out through center gobbled up here now by Young and Young shoots it down the ice glove there by the goaltender Justin Peters Peters leaves it behind the net taken by the Whalers flipped through center. Just knocked it across the Peterborough line. One of the Peets falls, manages to get the puck to a teammate, though. Now it's knocked across to Tardif on this side. His pass through center for Stahl, who was streaking in toward the blue line, but that failed to click. And the Whaler is able to send it back out through center rights again. It's taken there, shot down in wide of the Peterborough net. Two players fall together in the corner. A penalty coming up here to the Plymouth Whalers for interference as one of the Peets was flattened along the boards over there on the far side. James Neal can't believe the call and it was a very late call from Joe Park as uh, Neal had taken a man into the boards. You see it right here. And you know what? I say that's just finishing his check. And interference was the call, but uh, as you saw, the Peterborough player had just moved the puck up and then Neal took him into the boards. And I think that's just finishing your check and James Neal may be getting the short end of that call but the Peterborough Peets will take it and go on the power play. Fox dropped outside the Peterborough blue line. The Peets wind up with it. Turning inside his own line is uh, Ryder. Ryder feeds it ahead to Hendricks and Hendricks drives it down in wide of the Plymouth net. It's knocked out through center. Here's a race for the puck, hustling after it here. That's John Armstrong. Armstrong takes it into the corner. A couple of peaks there. Now Liam Reddicks digs it loose. Reddicks feeds it ahead to Ryder. Ryder, rink wide pass to Stewart. He's jammed along the boards there by Merlini. Back and behind the net and into the corner on the far side. Here's Ryder with it. Ryder had it briefly, now getting some help there from Coletta. Coletta, Riders on the ice. The puck comes loose, comes around on this side out to the blue line where Liam Reddix picks it up. Here's Reddix. Sends it across to the other side, back to Hendricks. Hendricks out there now, back to Hendricks again. Ryder, there's Hendricks with a shot right on, knocked down by Peters. Back to Hendricks once more. Over here, there's Reddix's shot. Hit goes off the leg. 
and bounds off into the corner on this side. Here's Reddix again. Reddix to Hendricks. Hendricks shot, knocked down, didn't get clear. It's score! Squeeze through underneath Justin Peters. The referee standing right there, and he can see the puck back in behind him in the net. Peterborough Pete's moving the puck around on the power play. Liam Reddix and Trevor Hendricks working the point, and eventually Daniel Ryder at the side of the net, getting the bad angle shot, but able to sneak it behind. Justin Peters, you see the shot there from Hendricks, and then from the bad angle, jamming in front of the net with both Ryder and Coletta out in front, and the Pete score on the power play to tie this game at three. Well, the Pete's have pulled even now here in the early stages of the third period. Brought to you by Andam Bath Center and Mr. Lube, and there's a shot down on goal, not stopped there by Peters. As we get a whistle, it was offside at the Plymouth Blue Line. All three of the Peterborough goals tonight scored on Justin Peters on the power play. Well, the crowd here at the Memorial Center certainly happy to uh, see that puck go into the net. Long way from over yet, but they rolled through the snow to get here to cheer for their team tonight. As the puck bouncing around across in front of the goal, mouth ends up back in the corner. Pete trying to move it out in front. It goes off the stick of one of the Peterborough players, and here come the Whalers in across the blue line, but they're offside. As one of the Whalers was in, I believe it was uh, Vigilante, just a little bit too quickly. Indeed, John Vigilante a little bit too uh, quickly in. He's first game back with the Plymouth Whalers. He signed a professional tryout agreement with Milwaukee of the American Hockey League, but failed the physical as he uh, had shoulder surgery a few years ago, and they still didn't like the condition of the shoulder. He hasn't missed a game here with the Whalers, but Milwaukee didn't like it and sent him back. Here's the puck coming down in across. Morrison puts it near the... Whalers net. They jam along the boards on the other side. Picked up here. Now trying to get away is Bowl. Bowl, he sends it over here on this side. Shot down into the corner by the Whalers. Now taken by Peterborough. They find it open to shoot it down here. The goaltender Justin Peters was ready for it, but the defense got back to pick it up first. Peets keep it inside that blue line. Now it's banked off the boards and out through center. Peets sidestepping one check. As the pucks clear it in here across the blue line, Caruana. Caruana hands it off. That's Morrison with it, trying to put it in front of that. Kalana puts it right in front. Caruana was there, but couldn't con uh, connect with it. Now the Pete's buzzing around that Plymouth net. Along the far side, it's lifted high in the air and comes bouncing down the ice, down near the Peterborough net. Pass out through center here, taken by Kalana. He'll just sweep it down into the Plymouth end as he leaves the ice. And then the Whalers pick it up at that point, shoot it right back down into Peterborough territory. They go back to get it, but Pete's trying to skate away. Peterborough player falls. That was uh, Harnden who was trying to get a break there, but that didn't work for him. As the puck's down to that corner for uh, Hendricks. Hendricks banks it off the boards. Now, kicked ahead, Harnden trying to catch it again. Just out of his reach, then he's jammed along the boards right there at the Plymouth players bench. And across the Plymouth line it comes, cleared down the ice by the Whalers, and the Peets back here to get it. Pass ahead, Tardif let it go, finds its way to Stahl. Stahl spun around in the corner, the puck's lying loose, taken here by Harnden. Harnden feeds it back to the line, there's a drive knocked away, and off into the corner is Vigilante picks it up. Vigilante gives it ahead to Brophy. Brophy across the line, back to Vigilante again, that's broken up, and the Peets clear it out through center. At their own blue line, the Whalers send it up near the Peterborough line. That stopped there by the Peach shot down the ice and hustling in there to get it for Plymouth is McGinnis. McGinnis sends it around behind the net. On this side, they find it opening. It goes sliding all the way down the ice. And that's an icing call against the Whalers. Kyle Raptus playing on defense tonight for the Peets alongside. Aaron Dawson, those two have worked together a good chunk of time this season. The defense combos for Peterborough tonight, you mentioned, I mentioned that one, Young and Hendricks, and then Sescon playing alongside Mark Pulaski, scratch for the Peets, Burke McDonald. This evening, of course, the Peets are also without S Steve Downey, who is trying out for Team Canada. He'll find out about noon hour tomorrow, our time, whether he's made the national junior team. Here are the Whalers now. They'll try to move in across that Peterborough line. They do, stuffing it down into the corner there. After it. Ward, they 
Peach dig it free there. There's a collision right in front of the Peach bench. And down the ice comes Carawana, but we have a whistle. And a stoppage in play here. And the Peets are picking up a penalty on this one after that collision right in front of their own bench. Coletta's being called for elbowing, and this was another late call. And Coletta doesn't believe it. He thought it was a clean hit. We'll see it here. And Coletta's stick wasn't high. I would say the elbows were in. Mm -hmm. If you were going to call anything at all on that, Maybe charging, but the thing is, it's a late call on players. That's one thing that frustrates a lot of players. If you think it's a penalty, call it right away. Not uh, one steamboat, two steamboats, and you hear the boo birds in the background. Well, the crowd here at the Memorial Center not too happy on that one. It nullified what appeared to be maybe a fairly dangerous Pete's rush as well. As the puck's along and down in Peterborough territory now, Whalers have it. There's Collins trying to put it in front. Does there's a drive right on, knocked down. Puck goes into the corner, picked up there by the Peach Daniel Ryder, but he failed to clear to the blue line. There's a shot, scores! Ward got to drive away and simply beat the goaltender David Schantz and the Whalers get their lead back. And needless to say, they're not happy here in Peterborough and now they weren't happy with the penalty and not happy with the power play goal for the Whalers as they have tied this hockey game at three. A nice play by Collins to keep the puck in at the line. Then it's Ward teeing it up from the left point, taking the shot and going over the shoulder, stick side on Shots. Good look at it here from up high. And just up over the shoulder, Shots maybe down a little bit early on the play. And the shot by Ward finds its way in the top corner for his ninth goal of the season. Whalers tie it. 3-3, actually go up 4-3, never mind. And so the Peets forced to uh, combat again in this game. They have found themselves scrapping from behind right from uh, the get-go in this hockey game, just a couple of minutes into it. Here's Shepley now. Shepley feeds it across the blue line onto the stick of Merlini. He couldn't get anywhere with it. The Pete there's a shot right on. Peters the save, get it in front, and they missed on that open corner with Peters down and out. Comes in front again, and they can't connect. Kept into the blue line. There's a shot put in front of the net by Peterborough. But the Whalers now will find it opening and clear it down the ice, and that's an icing call against the Plymouth Whalers. But again, the Peets came within an ace of tying the score, Terry. Quite a chance in front of the net. You see Morrison making a nice move in the slot. Got the first shot off. Rebound sitting right there. Morrison making a couple of moves, but just wide on the stick side of Peters. But a nice opportunity by Jordan Morrison to try and tie this game back up. Here's Raftus. Gets a shot away, hits a leg. Two Whalers start down the ice. Neal gets it across that line, trying to drop it back to Pisolini. That didn't work. It's picked up there by Dawson. Dawson for Peterborough shoots it around the boards, out through center ice. That's Stahl with it. Stahl drives it down and behind the Plymouth net. Cleared around the boards on this side. Kept in here. In the corner, Harnden. Harnden couldn't find the handle on it, really, as the Whalers able to just work it down into the Peterborough end. Into the corner on the other side, there's Harnden again, hands it back to Raftus. That's Kyle Raftus back in behind his own net, around on the boards here to Tardif on this side. Now Tardif starts out, zigs across center, gets it across the line, gets a shot away, but that's high. Rebound off the glass, picked up on the far side, set out through center ice. Taken there by Brophy, he stopped, Pete's back in again, the pass behind Tardif. Tardif now, check, here comes Vigilante. Vigilante gets it across the line, knocked down there by Hendricks. Puck rolls off into the corner, back and behind the Peterborough net. Peets will start back. Here's a pass ahead, knocked down by Stewart. Stewart chasing after, trying to get it in front of the goal. There's a shot. That goes off a leg in front of the net. Shepley was there. Into the corner. They turn again. Peets trying to feed it out there. Standing right to the front of the net is the Peterborough Peets. Scores! Daniel Ryder. It took him a bit of time, but he had the time. Nobody knocked him down, and finally he backhands it past Peters. Great play by Daniel Ryder, winning that battle with Justin Peters in front of the net. Ryder just being patient, pulling the puck back. You'll see Ryder here starts in the corner, moves the puck down low, then goes back towards the front of the net. He'll get the puck here, wait, 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 go to the backhand, and you're right, Ward wasn't able to get over to Ryder, and he's able to go upstairs for his 20th goal of the season. Daniel Ryder scoring for the piece, now tying this game at four. All right.
right, so everybody excited again here at the Peterborough Memorial Center as they're getting ready to drop the puck at center ice. And that's going to be Jordan Morrison out there taking the face off for the Peets. But the Whalers win that draw. Peets end up with it though. Coletta feeds it ahead. There's Morrison shot right on. Peters the save. It's loose in front of the net. Nobody can get a hold of it. And down the ice come the Whalers. That's Bull. He gets his shot away. One of the goal comes to the other side. And the rebound of wide of the net. Now the Peets try to start back again. Merlini breaks that up at center. Shoots it back and across the blue line. Finds its way out here to Morris and he misses a check. Merlini gets it again. Fires it down and across the Peterborough line as they chase after it. But that will be an icing call against the Plymouth Whalers as they fired it from their own side of center. The official on the most recent Peterborough goal. Ryder, his 20th of the year from Reddicks and Stewart at 8.21. That's Peterborough's first goal tonight that was not scored on the power play. And the shots on goal now 40-24 in favor of Peterborough on the night, but we're all tied at fours. Here's the face off at the side of the Plymouth net. Pass goes across to Dawson. Dawson shoots it in wide of the goal, ends up back and behind the net. Whalers have it, trying to work out. Ward flips it ahead. Neal hustling after it, but it gets down to the end of the ice first. And another icing call against the Whalers. We mentioned Steve Downey at the Team Canada World Junior Camp. Uh, Team Canada indeed tomorrow uh, late in the morning, maybe early afternoon our time, we'll announce the uh, the roster that will take part in the tournament. And that will uh, begin Boxing Day when Canada takes on Finland. Beats win this face off. Raft just gets a shot away, but it makes off a leg. Into the corner for the Peets. Zach Harnden in there digging for it. He's being tied up along the boards by uh, Letizia. Stahl in there zigzagging around gets it back to Harnden again. That's Harnden in the corner number 17 for the Peterborough Peets trying to keep that puck moving now feeds it back to Raftus. Raftus shoots it right back into the corner again to Stahl. Stahl drops it back but the Whalers are there banking it off the glass and out through center. Dawson will fire it back and across that blue line taken there by the Whalers. Will they get it out? Yes they do through center. Neal Gives it a swat and down the ice it goes. They chase after it, trying to move it near the Peterborough net. Slides around, picked up by the Peets, trying to bring it out through center ice. Stewart. Stewart hands it off to Reddix. There's Liam Reddix. His shot hits a leg and stops. And the Whalers start back from the other direction. In across that Peterborough line they go. That's broken up there. Reddix goes after it. Whalers are making a line change. One of the players coming off the bench, able to get a hold of that loose puck. And now the Whalers shoot it down and behind the Peterborough net. Bodies throwing all over the place down there right now as the puck's right to the side of the net. There's a drive that goes wide back and behind the net. Clear it out now. The Peets get a hold of it. Here comes Reddix. Liam Reddix. He'll find the corner there. He just wants to dump it down into that corner. It comes around to Vigilante. Here's Vigilante of the Whalers. Rink wide pass. The pass was missed. And moving up is Young. There's Young with a shot right on. Justin Peters makes the save on that, knocks it away. A 4-4 tie here at the Peterborough Memorial Center as the Whalers now trying to start back. Here's a pass coming in across the line. That's Vigilante, and he's checked as the Pete start back. In across the ice, there's Morrison with a drive right on, and we see Justin Peters, the goaltender, with another save right there, but that shot was pretty much right into him. Morrison taking the shot, and Colette had come in over the line with him, but had to stop right at the blue line. So Morrison pretty much on his own, coming into the zone, just getting the shot on goal. And Morrison holds on in front of 3,615 tonight. Nice crowd here, especially considering the conditions outside. But there's Caruana with a shot. That deflects high up over the glass into the meshing and out of play. 8.45 left in the third. And this third period of the game tonight being brought to you by Andon Bath Center and by Mr. Lube. He's right back in action tomorrow night in Kingston. We'll have it for you here on TV Kojiko. Now one of the Pete's hauled down there in the face-off circle and there's going to be a penalty. Patrick Coletta had the feet hauled out from underneath him. And so off to the uh, box goes uh, Jared Bowl. Bowl got tied up with Coletta on the far side and unsportsmanlike conduct penalty coming here. And we'll take a look at it. Watch on the far side. Coletta, right at the top left corner of the screen. Coletta and Bowl. 
I'll give Coletta a 5-8 on the dive. <laughs> well, now the Pete's on the power play. And the face-off's going to be down in the Whaler end. Peterborough wins that draw, comes back to Reddix. Reddix gives it to Hendricks. Hendricks feeds it ahead. That's Daniel Ryder back to Hendricks. There's a shot bouncing around in front of the Whaler's net. The Whaler's got a hold of it and cleared down the ice. Here comes Hendricks leading the rush for the pass to Ryder on this side. Weaves in across that blue line. Knocked down, the puck goes sliding off near the goaltender as we get a stoppage in play and another penalty call coming up here to the Plymouth Whalers. And the Whalers cleared the puck out of play from their own end and indeed another penalty coming up here. Again, that's one of those near rules. You put the puck over the glass from in your uh, own zone trying to clear it out. Well, the Peets then will have a two-man advantage for minute 33. Peters was the guilty party, so they're waiting for the Whalers to put somebody in the penalty box. But indeed, you're right, a glorious opportunity for Peterborough here with a two-man advantage for a minute and a half. All right, Armstrong goes to the box to serve that penalty. Box drop there to the right of the Plymouth net. Taken there by the Whalers, and it's cleared down the ice. Hustling back to get it. That's Trevor Hendricks. Hendricks feeds it up to Tardiff. Jamie Tardiff drops it back to Hendricks again. Over to Reddix. To Hendricks. Back into the corner again. Back to Hendricks. Here's Hendricks to Reddix. Reddix. Back to Hendricks. Into the corner to Hendricks again. And Reddix to Hendricks. And there's the shot. Comes in. It's in front of the goal. It's bouncing loose in front of the net. Out to Hendricks again. There's another drive right on. And Justin Peters makes the save as the Peets were passing that puck around almost to the point where the crowd was trying to get to the shoot the thing. Three very nice saves by Justin Peters, including a pair down low as the Peets remain on this two-man advantage. Hendricks at the point taking the shot. Rebound right there. And then right there off the stick of Jamie Tardiff. Peters making a nice save. Fournier able to clear the puck from the front of the net. Here's Liam Reddix over to Hendricks. There's Hendricks shot. That goes off a leg. Bounds off into the corner here. The puck is knocked down and then cleared through center where again it's knocked out. This time by Trevor Hendricks. He retrieves it. Passing it ahead. Back to Hendricks again. Here's Hendricks in across the line. Dumps it back to Jamie Tarnoff. Tarnoff tried to slip it along the boards. That went nowhere. Kept in at the blue line by Liam Reddix. Reddix to Hendricks. Here's Hendricks. Hendricks comes in front, but right there was Morris, and he gave it away, and it's cleared down the ice. Beats have to retrieve it. Hendricks starts again. Out there to Reddix. Gets it across the line. He's poke checked. And the Peets pick it up at that point. They'll try once more. Trevor Hendricks again and across the line. Here's Hendricks to Liam Reddix. Reddix winds up, takes the shot through some traffic, but it hits a leg. And now here's a race for the puck. Coming down the ice in on goal. And a shot knocked away by the goaltender for the Peterborough Peets, David Schantz, as Isolini cleared it down. Now, back in across the Peterborough line, we get a whistle here as one of the Whalers have returned from the penalty box. There's still 15 seconds remaining in the second one. And now what's going on over here? Well, the linesman has whistled the play down, possibly calling too many men, and the Whalers arguing, saying that, uh, no, they were had the, they had the proper number of players on the ice. And I don't think the Whalers are going to win this uh, battle here at all. Joe Park is coming across, and I believe he is going to make the too many men call here against the Plymouth Whalers. So this will put the Peets back on the two-man advantage. Mike Vellucci not happy on the Whalers bench. So Peterborough right back on the two-man advantage for another 15 seconds, and we'll continue with two minutes of power play time with 6.33 to go. Paisolini talking to the referee, Joe Park. Jonathan Rose, the linesman, made the call right in front of the Whalers bench and John Campbell. The other linesman came across to uh, agree with them as well. Campbell was on the, uh, on the near side here, so there's Campbell you saw a second ago talking to Steve Warden. Campbell had the better view of it being across the ice as opposed to Rose, who was right in the middle of things, but the linesman agreed that it was too many men on the ice, and that's the call that has been made here, and the Peets continue on the power play. 
Well, we're down to six minutes and 33 seconds remaining here in the third period. The Peterborough Peets, the Plymouth Whalers at the Peterborough Memorial Center, and now just waiting for the Whalers to get somebody over here to the penalty box. And again, they're going to be two men short for the next 15 seconds. Neil goes off. And now the Peterborough Peets. Here's the pass to Daniel Ryder. Ryder trying to hand it back to Dawson. Dawson feeds it over here to Coletta. Back to Dawson. There's Dawson putting it through right to the front of the net. And nobody could get a hold of it. It's bouncing around there. Marlini tried to clear it. Couldn't do it. Comes back to Dawson. Dawson feeds it again to Raftus. Here's Raftus. The one penalty has expired. One man advantage for the Peach now. They're passing it around in front of the net. Now there's a drive by Dawson. That hits a leg. Keeps the rebound into the blue line. Dawson again. Actually, that was Coletta who had kept it into the blue line. Now Coletta to Dawson. Here's Dawson. His shot goes off the leg. Feeds it back across to, to uh, Raftus. Raftus hands it off and turned to Ryder. Comes in front of the goal. Now Dawson moves in. On the other side, will they get it back to Raftus again? Yes, they do. That's Raftus. Raftus feeds it into Dawson. Dawson to Raftus once more. Raftus to the other side. There's a shot. That again goes off a leg and bounds to the boards on this side. Dawson moves up, giving it over there on the far side. Comes back to Raftus at the blue line. There's Raftus deflected from in front of the net, off into the corner. Dawson picks it up. 38 seconds remaining in the Peterborough power play as the Whalers get a hold of it and shoot it down the ice. Back here to retrieve it. Raftus gives it up to Hendricks. Hendricks hits Tardiff with it. Tardiff has to skate back into his own zone to turn. Here he comes. Jamie Tardiff gets in across the Whalers' blue line. Skates off into the corner here. Trying to clear it. It's knocked down in front of that by Young. It's bouncing around loose. Comes to the boards. Back out here to Hendricks. There's Hendricks' shot. That goes off a leg. Hendricks again. Slides through some traffic, but knocked down and cleared down the ice by the Whalers. Now the penalty expires. Neal back out on the ice. Whalers at full strength. Peterborough Peets. Young. Brian Young from behind his own net. Feeds it ahead. Here's Tardiff again. Across the line. Trying to slip it through. Right to the side of the net. Goaltender is down. There's Hendricks again with a shot. It's lying loose and it scores! Jordan Stahl saw that puck lying loose in front of that after the initial save had been made by Peters. He pokes it by him and the Peets for the first time tonight take the lead in this hockey game. Jordan Stahl cruising right towards the front of the net, picking up his second goal of the night. You see Stahl just coming right in there, found the loose puck. Nobody else could find it, and Stahl able to beat Peters on the glove side. Peter Rowe goes up by a score of 5-4. to four. Still 4.14 to go here in the third period on the 48th shot on goal on the night for Peter Rowe. Well, that took a lot of hard work, but the Peets finally got up by Peters, who's had a wonderful game here tonight. Now, here, come, here comes Brophy trying to move in front of the net. He's checked at the last minute, and Ryder takes it away. Ryder down the board just pokes it down the ice and hustling after it there is John Vigilante. Vigilante sends it over here on this side to Brophy. He's bumped. Puck comes loose, ends up in the corner, slides across the goal mouth on this side, and now here come the Peets down this side. Stewart. Stewart steps in across the line, just bounces it near the Whalers' net. It's steered off into the corner. A penalty coming up as one of the Peets, Stewart, was upended right in front of the referee. He really couldn't miss that one, and uh, so the Whalers send a man to the box. We'll sort that out in a moment. First of all, time for our trivia answer, and we can tell you that Bill Charters knew that Craig Saskon was originally drafted by the Plymouth Whalers and started his OHL career with the Whalers before being moved to Mississauga last year at the deadline and now on to Peterborough. So Bill Charters has won tickets to an upcoming Peterborough Pete's game by taking part in Mr. Lube trivia, offsetting minors here. Yeah, you're right. They sent them both. Steve Ward's gone for the, the Whalers. Here's Craig Stewart for Peterborough. Here's the uh, puck down in the Whalers' corner. Ends up going back and behind the net to the corner. Tardiff was after it there. Now Stahl digs it free. Stahl, he's jammed along the boards over there by McGinnis. As the Whalers now bring it out. 
Taken there by Terry, shoots it in. Why, there's a penalty this time coming to the Peterborough Peets as one of the Whalers upended inside the Peterborough blue line. And now the Plymouth Whalers will get a man advantage. And for Peterborough going to the penalty box, it's going to be Aaron Dawson for interference. He knocked down James Neal coming in over the blue line. Watch it here. There's Dawson and Neal right in the middle of your screen. Neal trying to hold up at the line. And Dawson saying, I had nowhere to go. Clock now taken by the Peterborough Peets, who are shorthanded. Sent down the ice. Now, here's the Whalers. Neal, poke check nicely, though, by the Peterborough defenseman, Trevor Hendricks. And the puck's third down the ice. Now they'll start back. Whalers pass over here. And across the line comes Collins, stops, looking for somebody to give it to. Sets it out in front of the uh, net to McGinnis, or I should say Vigilante. Vigilante puts it off. It's right in front. There's a backhand shot missed on the near side. Peets in the corner now, have possession of that puck. They find an opening and will shoot it down the ice. Peters away over there. He'll just shoot it all the way up the boards right to the Peterborough blue line. It's bouncing around, but now they call it offside at the Peterborough line. Justin Peters likes to play the puck, scored a goal as he shot the puck down as a member of the uh, majors two playoffs ago. And in that case, helped out the Whalers to move the puck down the ice, but they were offside at the blue line. And the Whalers are gonna call a timeout here as they'll continue on this four on three man advantage for the next 47 seconds, 111 to go on the penalty to Aaron Dawson. So the Whalers trying to take advantage of this power play have called a timeout to rest their power play unit. You see Vigilante, Collins, Fournier, and Paisolini getting instructions from Mike Vellucci on the Whalers bench, trying to draw something up while the Peets will try and fend off the Whalers' attack here with 224, 220 exactly to go in the 5 4 hockey game. Well, this has been a hard fought hockey game. Lots of um, good hits, lots of skating, but lots of opportunities around the net, Terry. It has been lots of opportunities for both teams. Justin Peters, very busy on the night. 48 shots on goal, five goals have gotten behind him, but he has been very busy. Mm. Yeah, we've seen some times when he's made some pretty spectacular saves. All right, a pair of 11s out there to take this face off. That's Jordan Stahl, number 11 for Peterborough. Whalers end up with it though. Collins on this side. Back here to Brophy. Brophy looking for a man to give it to. Finds that man. Trying to move in front. Vigilante to Brophy. Back to Vigilante again. Trying to slip it through some heavy traffic in front of that Peterborough net. It's right in front of the goal. Scores! But the referee indicating, I, the, I believe the whistle had already sounded. Because uh, David Schantz, the goaltender, was on that puck, and I think the whistle had sounded before the puck entered the net. And I think the referee saying no, that it's not going to count, and especially blowing it down. And the way the puck got behind Schantz was the Whalers players digging at it. But we'll take a look at it here. Moving the puck down low, Vigilante into the crease. High sleeve is shot. Right now it's underneath Schantz, but then jamming at it were the Whalers. And we lost it, and we lost it. We'll see if we can see it from the end zone, but uh, referee Park definitely did not, uh, or he's definitely waving it off. Let's see, when does it go in is the question. It went in right there. Ooh, oh, that's close. Know. It looked like he was just putting the whistle up to his mouth, didn't that's it? That's very close. Yeah. There's a shot right there, and uh, David Schantz grabs that out of the air and hangs on. And the Beats are getting a penalty on the play. Young had uh, given a little bump to uh, Fournier in front of the net, and Brian Young is going to go off, so the Peets remain shorthanded here. Cross-checking is going to be the call. But that was very close for the Whalers. Yeah. But there's that always that... Uh, the way the rule is applied in terms of it's not when you blew the whistle, it's when you said in your mind, okay, I'm stopping the play. And it's sort of one of those things you can never show, but that's the way it's been uh, called over the last few years in terms of when the whistle went. Here's the puck to the Whalers with the extra man on the ice. Moving that puck around, trying to get the equalizer here now. Collins on this side back to Vigilante. Here's Vigilante back to Collins. He missed the pass. Puck comes to the boards on this side, gobbled up here. Now the Ward is out of the box, and with the, the, the Peets are still short-handed. Now Ward has it. Ward hands it off. There's another drive right on. Shants the save. Forcing another whistle here. 
Whalers getting their 30th shot on goal. Just hearing from our uh, crack crew in the truck, and they say they've uh, checked out that uh, attempt by the Whalers, whether the puck went in before or after the whistle. They say the puck went in first, and then the whistle started. So the Whalers maybe not getting a break there. According to our crack staff in the truck. That's right. <laughs> There's the uh, puck. Well, we have another whistle here. Just as Collins touches it, they didn't do it fairly, so they'll drop that again. There's only a minute 21 seconds remaining here in this third period. 5 4 Peterborough. Collins now. Here's Collins, takes a shot. Right on, save made by Schantz. Another save. Great save by David Schantz. The Whalers bench had stood up thinking they had scored. Well, that was Schantz's turn to uh, sparkle in this game. David Schantz making a great save there. Face off to the left of Schantz. All right, let's see here. There's the puck being dropped. Pete's two men short, don't forget. Now they're just one man short. As the one has expired, the puck bounces around. Here's a break for Peterborough. With it is Stahl. Stahl moves in across that line, stops, looking for a man in front of the net, tried to pass it through, but it hits a leg and bounces off into the corner. Coming back, the Plymouth Whalers. Dump it down and across the line, Brophy bounces it off the boards back and behind the net. Brophy gets it back again to Collins. Collins to the side of the net. It's bouncing right at the side of the goal. Extra attacker for the Whalers. Peter's gone to the bench. Here's the puck down deep in that corner. Back out here to the blue line. Ward gets a drive away. Hits a leg. Stops. Ward takes another swat at it. And the Pete's able to clear it down the ice. And Ward has to hustle back to get it. Again, that net is empty. To our right, Whalers have the extra attacker out there. Pete's playing shorthanded anyway as the puck's along the board. Another penalty coming up for the Peterborough Pete's as the puck is shot back over the blue line out through center. And now Neal brings it in across the line and here's the call coming up. It was offside on the play and then after the whistle, Neal putting the puck behind Johnson. He was not happy to see that at all, but the penalty will be assessed here to Peterborough with six seconds to go in the third, but the faceoff will come outside the blue line. Aaron Dawson goes off for slashing. So an opportunity for the Whalers, but it's going to start outside the blue line. So they need to quickly bring the puck into the zone and a big advantage for Peterborough having the faceoff outside. All right, just waiting for the uh, Peach to get some final instructions from the bench here. Hendricks comes over to talk to the coach. All right, the puck's dropped here outside the blue line. Terry picks it up. Time is ticking down. Kicked away by Schantz. Off into the corner as the buzzer sounds. And this hockey game is over. 48-36, the final shots on goal. The Peterborough Peets pick up a 5-4 win over the Plymouth Whalers. Four in a row for the Peets. We're back to wrap after this. It's Peets Hockey on the OHL tonight, presented by Inn Bath Center on TV Kojiko. This is your world where you get ready for movie night, a gaming session, or some downtime. In your world, every little thing has to be just right. Because every little thing matters. Welcome to ultra-fast unlimited internet, flexible TV, and a powerful network to make it all happen your way. Welcome to a world of your very own. Bob Aikens along with Terry Doyle here at the Peterborough Memorial Center where the hockey game tonight has just been completed between the Peterborough Peets and the Plymouth Whalers. And this was a hard-fought battle tonight at the Peterborough Memorial Center. Shots on goal, lots of shots, 48-36 to 36 in favor of Peterborough. And the final score tonight, Peterborough winning this one by a score of 5-4. to four. Let's go downstairs to ice level, and here is Terry Doyle with a guest. Thanks, Bob. Joined here by Jordan Stahl, scoring the game-winning goal tonight. Jordan, uh, take us through it. Puck just seemed to sit there, and uh, I'm sure you were maybe surprised you had that much of a lane. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, things just kind of opened up for me, and uh, the puck was just, again, just sitting there in front of the net. I just 
buried my head and fired it and went in. So. Justin Peters, a goaltender you've seen lots of, of course, the last year's playoffs as well in his time with Toronto and a player you uh, put a lot of shots on goal on tonight and it took a lot to finally beat him. Yeah, for sure. I mean, after the first, we were uh, kind of down on ourselves. You know, we had a lot of shots on that. We just wanted to keep that going and, uh, you know, sooner or later they're going to go in on him. And uh, that's what we kept on doing and we got the win. Were you surprised that Plymouth was able to open up the 2-0 lead after one? Yeah, they come out strong on us. I mean, uh, especially in our own barn, we can't let that happen. I mean, uh, we just had a tough first period, uh, too many penalties, and uh, that's what happened. So we just tried to battle back, and uh, that's what it. Heading into Kingston tomorrow night, a team that's won eight of their last ten games, and a team that I'm sure you know is going to be gunning for you right now in second place. Yeah, I mean, uh, they got a good, pretty good team there, and, uh, you know, they're a young team and quick team, and uh, we just got to get in there and uh, just uh, do our best, um, start off strong, uh, not like we did this game, but uh, and just uh, keep going. Jordan, thanks for joining us. Good luck tomorrow night. All right, thank you. That's Jordan Stahl scoring the game-winning goal tonight as the Peterborough Peets knock off the Plymouth Whalers here at home. Our next broadcast here on TV Kojiko comes your way tomorrow night from the Kingston Memorial Center when the Peets take on the Frontenacs. It'll be a 7.30 start here on TV Kojiko, and then we'll be back here Saturday night as the Peets round out the pre-Christmas portion of the schedule when they'll take on the Brampton Battalion, 7 o'clock broadcast time here on the OHL tonight on TV Kojiko. That's going to do it for tonight. The Peterborough Peets win their fourth straight game by a score of 5-4 here over the Plymouth Whalers. For Bob Akins and our crew behind the cameras and in the truck, I'm Terry Doyle. Thanks for joining us for the OHL tonight. It's been presented by In and Bass Center right here on TV Kojiko.